Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Residence Arcade. It's Wednesday night, and it's six thir- uh, seven thirty. Sorry, <laughs> yep, uh, we've is. changed our time, as you might be already aware. Um, and we're talking about hardware today. So we are. Hello, Again. C. Hello, Lou. <coughs> hello. As you hello, might already. Sam. Yeah, no, Sam. Um, unfortunately, Sam is working tonight, so he can't join us. Um, but he did contribute a fair amount last week, anyway. So. Now, last last week we talked about consoles, um, con- um, console controllers, PC controllers. We talked about Xbox versus not Xbox um, consoles versus PCs to an extent. We did talk a little bit a little a little bit we, about it. I can't even remember they covering that in any depth. But... Not in not in massive depth, but we we covered a fair amount. And you know, we even went into a little bit into the fact that you have to you know you have to upgrade your PC and keep it up to date. Think- I th- I yes. Think there's a lot more we can talk about. Oh, yeah, oh, definitely. I'm, I'm not yeah. saying we can't talk about these topics again. I'm not going to run downstairs and get my uh, my uh, <laughs> c- control. Back. Yeah, because because it was a disaster last week. And we're keeping it simple. Well, I say keeping it simple. I've still got a million things open, but I'm keeping it simple in terms of uh, uh, in terms of the setup. We're not going to another screen and showing you any footage this week or anything like that. The only so, hardware yeah. you need is our hardware. Yes, our hardware. This, and this maybe. So, um, did we did we leave anything unfinished last week? I guess the um, the PCs versus consoles or consoles versus PCs uh, thing is still open for debate. Something that caught my attention um, this weekend was I was in London and there was a there was a huge poster in the underground for Alien Isolation, the new uh, Aliens franchise game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I saw advertisements all over the place, actually, and not one of them mentioned it was on PC. It was all Xbox and PS4. Yeah. But no mention it, of PC. Is it on PC? Because I it haven't is looked at it. All, so. It is on PC. <laughs> is is that then just because people take it that a big release like that will be on the PC? Obviously, unless it's... Uh, That's not always the case, though, is it? I mean, you know, the Halo games... Haven't really made the jump to PC. Not the later ones, anyway. It's there's always, um, there's always a, a mention of it in the small print, though. Usually, I mean, I, I've never really seen PCs as a a major playing uh, gaming platform. There never it never has been. Is that then because of the way they're advertised? I.e., Microsoft and Sony um, advertise the game directly because that benefits the sales of its console. Whereas Windows as a platform isn't necessarily aimed specifically at games. I think maybe you're right. I think that there is something in... If Obviously, if you've got a game on the consoles which costs 50 quid, and then you've got a game on a PC which costs 30 quid, mm. um, you're obviously going to try and advertise the hell out of the fact that it's on the consoles. It's the same game, but people will pay 20 quid more for it. Yeah. So it makes sense logically from a monetary position, but it, it, just, it just irked me because until recently... You always saw PC it, like as a first-class citizen, but then the advertising, and now it's more and more a case of I don't know. It's because the um, the is divide that true? between price. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, when you look at all games, if I've got loads of games up on my shelf and I can look at any of them, um, and it'll show you the whole range of things it's on. I remember buying magazines and it tell you PC. Well, it'd say Windows normally, Windows and Xbox and PlayStation, whatever. Um. I, I, as I said, I don't think I've ever seen PC as a major gaming platform or been featured prominently in advertising either. It's just one of the things that they reel off at the end usually. <coughs> now, fair enough, it may be leaning more towards consoles and PS3s, but there are a lot more consoles and PS3s out there that, as we are totally aware of, directly aimed at gamers than PCs are, but than yeah. PCs ever will be. Because as we said last week, PCs are multi-purpose. It's not. It's not a PC versus console debate, really. It's more of a, in terms of games, anyway. I mean, we we can all talk about the game quality being different. We can all talk about the control systems being different. But at the end of the day, PCs are built for more than a, a lot more, a hell of a lot more, more than an average PC user would ever hope to kind of get near. You know, the amount of things you can do on a PC in comparison to a console is it's it's unquestionably there's there's no there's no kind of comparison you can make. Yeah, yeah. really. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. It just I, I think it just left a bad taste in my mouth. It just to see 
That's because you're a, you're a PC off. elitist, though. That's a, that's the only reason. <laughs> well, no, but it, it actually confused me because as a PC gamer, I saw an advertisement and I, for a brief moment, well, I, if I hadn't if I didn't know any better, I would have thought, oh, okay, so it's a console exclusive. I can't even buy it, and mm. I would have dismissed it there and then. Yeah, they, but there's about left out a, an, an element of them their target audience. There's only about twenty PC gamers, though. That's the thing. <laughs> uh, you know, in, no, if you look at the if you look at the uh, the, the figures, console gaming will always be bigger because it's cheaper, it's more accessible, it's easier to get into. Not cheaper. You, it is cheaper. It's not cheaper. Uh, it it is if you're a serious PC gamer. The amount no. I spend on my PC, I know fair enough every five years I might upgrade it, but I spend well over a grand each time I upgrade my PC. Alright, well I paid 700 quid for my PC and I know that I don't pay 50 quid per game either. Uh, there was, was actually a thing no, posted yeah, on that. I, I get that, I get that. I didn't. I know also peripherals cost more on consoles generally, but you can also get some really specialist stuff for PCs that cost a fortune. There was an interesting thing that was posted um, on... Uh, Kotaku, where they asked people, was it Kotaku? It might have been Kotaku. Um, <laughs> I will tell you where it's from in a sec. Guess, guess how, guess how I pronounce Kotaku. Go on then. Kotaku. Kotaku. Doesn't right. even have that last K in it. It was, it was some website where basically they asked people to post the how much they'd spent on their Xbox, um, or, or their console basically, the console. So all the games. The machine itself, the peripherals, the average prices were coming out at between a thousand dollars and two and a half thousand dollars. Right. Now, a, a gaming PC will set you back between seven hundred, well, dollars probably set you back a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. But then the games, the games are a lot cheaper. So it kind of, it, I guess, it breaks even actually. Think it, about it. It all depends on how much you're buying. Sure. If you're getting a console and you're buying 150 games, then of course the console's going to be more expensive. If you're getting a console and buying two games, then it's going to be cheaper. But so no, I think if if you compare it to say you bought a console <coughs> and bought 200 games and then bought a PC and bought 200 games like top end range, you yeah, probably, it I mean. would probably even out though. It, well, I think it probably would. Uh, I think it's better value for money PC gaming. Oh, yes, yeah, I, for many other reasons, as I said. But if we keep it just to gaming. If we don't talk about all the other uses that a PC has, per, I mean, to me, it's a better experience, even, especially these days when you don't get as many kind of hacked games together. And, you know, at least the games have got a, a certain level of quality control to them, you know, because they release them on consoles first. Consoles, if you get a crash on a console, everybody is up in uproar. PC users, yeah. we're totally and utterly used to it, aren't we? <laughs> we're, we're, uh, another we're, blue screen. Yeah, I, I had one last night playing something. You know, it, it's not playing. I was doing something with sound, and then something went wrong. But yeah, it's. I think in terms of the only arguing points in my eyes for the console versus PC debate is uh, is that the the graphics are always way ahead as long as you keep up to date because you can you can have an old graphics card that doesn't have the features of a new console, for example. Um, we used to have better resolutions in general, but these days it's it's kind it's of... It's 1080p across the board, yeah. isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. Well, no, 720 is the common console output, even though both the 360 Elite and the PS3 could do 1080p. Neither of them really used it that much. I think there might, be, might maybe been a few games that were on it, whereas right. PCs, every single one of our games is, is 1080p, but they've been 1080p since before 1080p was the thing, you know? Yeah. If you remember before 1080p <coughs> televisions came out, that's just the marketing term for it. Well, that is 1920 yeah. by 1280, too, isn't it? It's uh, that's right, isn't it? I could get that right. 1080, 1920 90. by 1080. 1080. Shit. And the 1080p is it, part yeah, is important. Clues here. in the name, yeah. <laughs> oh, what an idiot. The interesting thing is that, that with PC, <laughs> you've kind of been forced to those high resolutions because of TFT monitors, because of LCD TFT monitors. You TFTs, can't really look Jesus. Well, you know, our flat screen monitors that we're using now, without without these, we could have quite happily sat at the, the resolutions that we run on CRT. You can, you know, 1024 by 768. It'd be yeah, just but a PC fine. would never have worked on that type of resolution, which yeah, is why it drove the... And also 1080, 10, 1024 by 768 is still miles bigger than any uh, any old console used to be. 480, oh, yeah. 480p, yeah, weren't there some of them? Uh, yeah, it's probably four times bigger. 
yeah so i mean we always had that as, a, as pc gamers control systems we've talked about in the previous one in quite a lot of depth but graphics fidelity control systems and resolution they're the only three actual arguing points that i can really bring up when it comes to games choice yeah. of games what about choice of games um well I, generally the pc gets a lot of the games it doesn't get the exclusives obviously because that's why they're exclusive hmm. but i think you do have quite a large choice of games on the pc compared to the consoles we also got the best of the indie revolution or the most recent indie revolution even though they yeah. are now coming out on <coughs> well now they've been coming out on consoles for a while but now they're becoming quite mainstream you know the indie games but, but I, I don't know a- i i i, I I can pick up a PlayStation and go, there are some awesome exclusives on that. Ah, Metal yeah, Gear Solid, the originals, you know? There's another yeah. element to that, though, as well, which is um, emulation. Mm. Because but PCs, we, yeah. yes, they play games, but they can also emulate all the consoles. They not, can, but not, not really legally, either. <laughs> yeah, it depends if you, if you own. If you own the games, yeah. Yeah, then you're allowed to emulate them. But obviously, if you own the games, you tend to have owned the machine which the games play on. Yeah, but we're on about what's better, the console or the PC. Well, yeah, yeah. The PC kind of well, does it all, doesn't it? I, I, we, have, we really have to quantify this and say or we can only talk about the gaming part and, and emulating is gaming, so I think I'll, I'd allow that, I think, because it's... Yeah. And another important factor to, uh, to consider with PCs is game development. Yeah. Yeah, You okay. can develop games on a PC, you can't really on a console unless you get a dead You can, game. but that's not gaming, is it? Really, it's that's gaming. Crea- related. It's creating a game. Well, we could go talking about all kinds of things that are related to gaming, but you well, know, it's hard. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, zombie, z- zombie in the chat has said, I guess people who prefer PCs are also into mod case and, and uh, assembling their own machine. Um, I'm with you on the second one. I'm not so with you on the first one. I think the whole uh, sticking lights in your case and windows and stuff is is uh, that's it's, it's similar to modding your car, really, isn't it? It's sort of something you do in your twenties. <laughs> but we're yeah, all in our thirties now. We we just want a computer that works. If I have if I have slippers. any if I have any kind of like mods or anything in my PC or any kind of fancy lights, it's because it happened to come with a motherboard. I never <laughs> go out of my way to do these. Yeah. In fact, I never was into it. I was into getting awesome hardware, but not the flashy stuff. You know, not because it looked good. Yeah, I, I mean, I've the got... only mod I don't know any of my PCs was I replaced the LED uh, for the hard drive and power status to a blue one because I like blue. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, I've I've just got a black rectangle a cuboid in front of me, which is my computer. But um, I, like I said, when I was at um my friend's in London, uh, at the weekend, he's got a case which is looks like a greenhouse basically. It's just a window yeah. kit with a few bits in between, um, and all the wires are hidden around the back, so it looks really spartan. It's just a motherboard and a CPU and a GPU. So mine was like that. My previous case that I've now got as my rendering case that doesn't actually do rendering very well. <laughs> that, yeah, that I had some fancy mechanism to hide all the cables, but it's still I, it, it, whatever. It, I've never really... I mean, this is hardware and I've never really thought about this, about the whole PC modern scene, because it's not just PCs. I bought... Um, an original Xbox, and it was a clear Xbox I've got, with loads of lights in it and stuff like that. I've got a it green one, a limited edition yeah. green, um, like like see-through green. It's really weird. <clears throat> it's like it's come and gone. I mean, I don't think anyone really cares anymore about this stuff. I guess there well, are people. You know what did it? Land parties, and that we've talked yeah. about. We talked about the death yeah. of land parties previously, or the uh, the fact that land parties are, are starting. to starting to become just friends really it used to be a big thing you know I've, there still is i mean we still have the multiplayer lands we still have the massive ones that go on but it's i, I can't imagine it actually being too much fun at those things well no i mean you, you know the, the the games industry has kind of helped to strangle lands they've removed the dedicated servers they've removed the land play the dedicated land play They've removed a lot of the things that people rely on to, to the, the things that make land special, and yeah. now you've got the, um, the 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 broadband internet connections as well. I mean, you've got <coughs> uh, hundred meg easy to pe- most people's houses. You basically got a land connection to the internet. Yeah. So when people used to go there and, and share files and stuff like that, that's all gone. There's not yeah, a great the- deal left. I, 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 one one of the things that a LAN party allowed you to do especially back when I used to go to them all the time was 
allow you to play with a very low ping, pretty much no mm-hmm. ping. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone was an LPB. I don't know how many people watching remember, don't like know about LPB and HPB. This is possibly something from the nineties and early two thousands that only us three remember. Well, but, uh, I, I, there's a lot of people yeah, I think who were around then. Was. Yeah, playing no, games. They were, but, but I mean, <coughs> I think there's, I, there's a, you know, there's a whole generation of people who don't, who have never played on a modem. You know, what, I really never I, used a modem. I really, occasionally, I, I think about our old Quake Two clan days, and I think about. I wonder what GSI are doing. I wonder what Gunshark, uh, Gunsharks Incorporated. I wonder what um, DOG are doing, Distinguished Old Gentlemen. I wonder what like, SA, I forgot what SA stood for. The, all the clans that we used to play with on a weekly basis. Yeah. I really in, I'm really interested in what their lives are like now. Are they anything <laughs> like ours? Have they kept up the technical stuff? Are they, you know, I'm just. Well, should, interesting. Should try and organise like a Quake 2 reunion. I, oh, uh, how hard would that be though because it's just anon- it was anonymous back then it was totally anonymous there was no social networking we had no profiles that people could add friends to get you know and I'm just IRC, off topic a bit here. yeah it was just IRC talking to each other and most people had BNCs that hid all the the details so you couldn't even even if we had all logs you couldn't go where did they live let's trace them let's find them <laughs> wouldn't happen anyway you know what I mean but it, it's but no, I mean, I think I can't remember if I was saying this to Sam the other week when he was around my house, or I was saying it to you guys, or we've seen it on the stream. But um, the 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 rise of broadband across the UK, or re- good broadband across the UK, we yeah. are very blessed in that. I mean, I know there are better countries, but you know, it's, it's in terms we did of we catch up. We did catch up eventually, didn't we? we yeah, I mean, behind rem- for a long time. I remember back in the day when America were, used to have T1 lands and stuff, and we were like really envious because we we're on our dial up and it, and now we're miles way ahead of the americans in terms of yeah. infrastructure um and i'm not saying yay england or i'm just it's like you know it's it i don't know how that's happened i think it's probably because of the size maybe <coughs> do you remember do you remember the norwegian people we used to play with in quake 2 and they all oh, had uh, yeah. the red, red band bollegets the 10 meg connection back in the night like 1999 when we we had no hope of it we had absolutely no chance of getting anything near that oh i had 56k which wasn't even 56k yeah, your 56k was terrible. My, I could download at the grand total of sometimes six bytes per minute. Screaming.net, I got on. <laughs> <And> screaming.net <coughs> was apps. It was 110 ping. I think I got it down to 90 at one point. On 90 a more ping day. on 56k. Yeah. Scre- Did you not ever try screaming.net? I had a really bad connection. I I always suffered. For, I ended up paying for a 120 pound modem just to get reasonable like 5k a second download speeds. Wow! But I know my ping never got below 180 on a modem. I had a seriously bad line. Yeah, but well, Steve, I, across the road, yeah. what, you got you uh, got that, ridiculously uh, fast speeds, and you you, got, you probably had half of my cable. <laughs> I, th- I think I've got a screenshot of uh, me downloading something at. Oh, it was so much stupid, like 12 12 k kilobytes a second. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sustained though. These used have loose spitting balls. Yeah, because I I would get like one k second tops. <laughs> but this ra- that what I was trying to get get to was this rise of the internet, this rise of broadband and fast connections and streaming video and streaming services, and everyone can actually see each other pe- other people like this. This would not have been possible. This would not no. have been possible a few years ago without i sevens i five processors. Uh, you know, multi core, multi threaded optimized for encoding video there's no chance skype would have been a popular thing really i say a few years possibly a while back but yeah um it becomes it's it's come become quite antisocial being a geek i think whereas it started antisocial you would only really hang around with other geeks you know going to land parties going to dungeons and dragons and magic the gathering stuff you know that that, that kind of thing and now it's it's a case of we kind of we spend all our time at home, we never really go and see each other. We're a bit different. We do, you know, have a LAN party now and then. But, well, we—I mean, even this, what we're doing now, is a, is an example of that. And you know, we're not sat in a pub doing this. We're actually sat miles apart from each other mm. talking. Yeah, but it's difficult to get a, a stream in a pub. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is brilliant. I love uh, the the reason that I wanted to start Resonance <coughs> Arcade uh, before we even had a name for it was because I don't see my friends enough and. Steve, Sam, and Lou are my three of my best friends on the planet. You know, it's it's kind of it it makes a it makes a big difference. 
being able to talk to you, like set so, set some. As you get older, you get busier, don't you? Setting some time aside a week to speak to your mates or play games with your mates is pretty yeah. much the only way you can <coughs> really do it when you get older. And it's vital for your mental health. <laughs> kind of going off topic a little bit, but it's still <laughs> kind of related to the hardware, you know, yeah. the broadband thing. It's what the hardware has enabled <coughs> us to do. <coughs> well, consoles are consoles are basically an all-in-one package, aren't they? They are like a they're like a remote control that allows you to browse it's... your TiVo or your V Plus box. You know, you've got everything contained in one little box that works usually, and when it's it doesn't work, everyone kicks on off. an entertainment side. I think, but dumbed down. Uh, yes. Learning. You know what? You know. I remember? Do you remember being called a geek and getting bullied at school because you like computers? I mean, yeah. I I didn't get too much of it, but I did get a bit of it. It, it, it did. Not, not not so much for computers. I mean, it was for other things. But but kind of computers are part and parcel of being the introvert nerd at school. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I you know I wasn't that into it at secondary school, but I was always a geek. I was always into Warhammer and playing cards, card games, things like that, you know, that kind of stuff. But If you re- realise that life's um, like <laughs> goal now to grow a beard and become a wizard. Yeah, well, that's it. I am going for the wizard length. I think it's a, a roundabout here. <laughs> the wizard length? Yeah, there's an there's a, there's a official length there's of beard a, that's called the wizard length. Um, it's, it's, some, it's, it's a competition thing. What, the wizard length. <laughs> Baby Yogg in the wizard length. <laughs> Starring Bad <laughs> Gals. <laughs> Wrapping my beard around it. Yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, what was I saying? I was talking about uh, stuff, about talking. things. So, uh, can you remember your first PC? What yep. it yes. had in it? Yep. Uh, yeah. Right, which go one on, do you, you want? Hang on. First. Which, with the, right, I, the, I, can, I have two first PCs. There's a reason for it. First one being the one, the first one that I was given. Uh, the I was first given, one that was either by... Bought for you, or you bought yourself. You know, not right. a happy down type of thing. Uh, here's a little a little little story for for Chris's first oh. PC ever. Uh, I <laughs> saved up for a little bit, and I saved up like a couple of hundred quid. And I was like, "This is amazing! I'm going to get it. It's going to be brilliant." And I, and I planned it all out. I wanted a dual P two four hundred, and uh, no reason for it back then because it was two two separate slots. The processors were that long, like memory is now. Basically, if you remember them, the yeah. old. Pentium twos, slot twos, yeah, slot twos, and uh, you you put de- hang on, no, you didn't put them in. What was it? Right, so it was it was a dual P two four hundred with a server board with something like one hundred twenty eight megs of RAM, uh, an eighty meg hard drive, and the 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 PS de Resistance, my dual SLI'd Voodoo twos, <laughs> but. I saved up this money, right? I saved up 200, 300 quid. And I was, and then I realised that I'd turned 16 like a, a year before and my grandma had some money in trust for me. And I had like two grand or three grand in this trust. And I just, as soon as I realised and remembered that it was there, I'd, I'd used it to buy my first PC. So I'd, I, it, I was like, it was weird going from saving up for months to going like for, in, within a, a few minutes going, oh my God, oh my God, I can actually get it now. It's amazing. And I, I remember getting the money out of the bank uh, Nat West in Stockton. I went in, got the money out in cash, ran round to um, the, I can't remember the name of the it's store Stock- now. Yam, Yam Computer. Yeah, <laughs> two grand in cash, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm carrying it round, and, I, and I've had I had this big old like yellow ski jacket thing on. So I mean, I was I'm a, I was always being a pretty big guy, so I wasn't going to get mugged or out. I don't think, but it was still like I was hitting my pants because I had so much money. I'd never seen that much money before, let alone buying it. So I think it cost eighteen hundred quid the first PC I got, but I proper maxed it out it was the best you could get for everything and oh <clears throat> yes i do i do remember my first pc <laughs> yeah, so conversely my first pc wasn't that good <laughs> it, was, it was it was all right it was uh, a 166 mmx pentium um it had some weird graphics card that wouldn't actually run 3d accelerated on anything mm. apart from one really crap tank game I had a 3D Verge, because you had to have three graphics cards if you had SLI, and I had a 3D Verge for the 2D. Yeah. Um, well, it said yeah. 3D, but it was a 2D like for the desktop stuff, and then the, the Voodoo 2s were just for 3D FX stuff. It was the S3 Verge, because I had the same one. S3 Verge. Uh, I got, um, I, I remember getting, was it a Orchid Righteous 3D, uh, 3D was FX? The, 
Yeah, that was the original 3D effects that I had. Yeah, then I bought that onto the crappy Intel thing. Yeah. And then that worked. I had 16 megabytes of RAM. I had a 2.1 gigabyte hard drive. Yeah. And but I, I think I had a 16 speed CD ROM. Nice. 16, <laughs> bloody hell. The thing is, I remember that spec being the, the kind of the spec at, at the time, but this was 90, 96, 97? 97, I think. Um, and around That's that time, gonna, all no, computers were, were being sold. They, they were being sold as um, 16 gig of RAM, uh, uh, Pentium 166 MMX, because the MMX <coughs> makes a difference. Yeah, the MMX made loads of uh, Normally 2.1 gig hard drives. It was, God, yeah, it honestly, in, t in 10, 15 years' time, we'll be looking back at this conversation going, you're a dickhead. There's like hologram processors <laughs> now, you know, fucking crazy shit that we can't even imagine now. <laughs> well, yeah. I, did you mention that yours was a weird shade of green as well, Steve? It wasn't a weird shade of green. Yours was, yours was that beige. It made fun of green. <laughs> <laughs> Steve had the only green PC in the world. Right, zomb zombies just said this is too new. My first one was a four eight six SX. Yeah, now, we're I not that old school. I can beat that. My actual first physical PC that I had given to me was a two eight six, um, and I, I I've still got the power switch from the um, PSU somewhere uh, as a reminder not to do what I did to it. But I'll find it in a minute anyway when I stop talking. But um, I I. I I got given it, and my friend was looking after our house while we were away, and he was he was the one who gave me it, and I had some stuff on there that I didn't want him to look at because I knew he was a bit of a hacker and stuff, and it wasn't his business anymore. It was my computer. And I don't think you could lock Windows 3.1. You couldn't lock the screen or anything, so it was just basically he could just get in, and there was no BIOS password on my PC. And um, he, I, anyway, I turned the, the power switch on the back to 110 volts, but I didn't know that it was 110 volts. I just assumed it was the turn the power pack switch off and press the on button and there was a spark that hit the ceiling and exploded my first PC <laughs> ever. Yeah. So yeah, I remember uh, uh, I got one uh, given to me. I think my dad took it from work when they were having like a, a tech upgrade. And it was a 286 that had a turbo button on it. Yes! Yeah. <clears throat> and it was Olivetti. Um... It could only run DOS, and it came with its very own green screen monitor. Nice. It was absolutely useless. I remember that. I remember we played on it. Like we played on it. We we used it a couple of times. And we just tried didn't, to we use couldn't it. We couldn't do anything with it. <coughs> then when you got your PC, we uh, we got a cover disc with a lot of Quake mods on it. Yeah. Do you remember that? And we couldn't yeah. get any of them working. Like it came <laughs> with this this disc. It said like 150 Quake mods. Play um, Q Rally and things like that. It's yeah. like, whoa, well, we've got to try these. We installed Quake and then we sat there for the entire night, unable to install a single mod because none of them came with installers or instructions. It was just someone download a lot of mods off the internet and put them on a CD and yep, then put and them on a cover disc. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, um, I I got given all kinds of discs from mates, you know, with all kinds of games and software on it back then. Uh, but I, yeah, I remember the um, I remember cover discs. It is kind of hardware. I would I think I'd, we we can talk about cover discs. Do you remember them though? Because they don't yes, happen yeah, anymore. Yeah. They, they even stop. No, they stopped doing them on. Uh, well, okay, the magazines I subscribe to, they stopped doing them, and it's now they now give away <laughs> posters. <laughs> you've, you've never, yeah, you've never got fan. CDs. Yeah, you've never, <laughs> never got CDs and couple copies of Razzle, Chris. <laughs> it's uh, it's actually your mum's <laughs> magazine. Um, no, I, uh, I I subscribe to OPM, um, official PlayStation magazine, and and they stopped doing cover discs a while back. Um, yeah, I can see why console ones would do that because you might as well just download it. Then again, PCs, you might as well PC. I mean, look, floppy disks are obsolete now, aren't they? Zip zip disks are obsolete. CDs are obsolete, pretty much. DVDs are getting obsolete. I Blu -rays. wouldn't say CDs are obsolete yet. I, I think they are. CDs. They're only they're only not obsolete because of uh, the the convenient size, which is what they were invented for in the first place. But the convenient size for the, uh, an album, music album, that's the only reason that they're that particular size. I suppose they've been kind of superseded by memory sticks. Because yeah. you don't get DVDs with audio on, do you? So DVDs are for audio and video. You do video get DVD audio, audio, but it, it, yeah, you no one does it. On DVD. Yeah, but yeah. you don't get it very. You you don't just go out and buy it. It's not like I mean they might do. The odd special edition DVD audio, but I, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't think I've ever seen one without some video on it. Zombie in chat has just said the other day, one friend's son found in some found some old stuff, 
some floppies, and that's what they were. I said they were old-fashioned flash drives. <laughs> <laughs> they are, yeah, yeah. Back in the day when floppy disks were floppy as well, you know? I uh, remember the... Th- 3.5s, yeah. 3.5s weren't so floppy, but actual yeah. five and a quarter inch ones. Have you got, got some of them lying around as got well? Got some down. I've got a, a five ah. and a quarter inch drive down there as well. That was that Commodore one I was pointing at last week. Ah, right, right, um, right. I, I've probably got the disc somewhere. I'm not going to look through them because it'll take me ages. But yeah, it's. It's. it's, it's I'll tell you what, it's it, talking about kind of um, storage mediums. Since games have stopped being so dependent on on storage medium like dvds and stuff the size of them has grown massively mm. there was one game that came out recently i can't remember which one it was but it was like 40 gigs um i think it might be ta- uh, shadow of mordor was i think it was shadow yeah that's it yeah shadow of mordor <laughs> nearly 40 gigs of game but, yeah they used to we used to be constrained by memory limitations and now that isn't a problem at all is it you, you well, on consoles, you still have to worry about it as a developer, but yeah. when it comes to PCs, well, I mean, six gig of memory, but when it comes to disk space, disk space is the cheapest thing on a PC. Yeah. So they're just not worrying about it anymore. Why? Why worry about it as well? I mean, I, last time I worried about disk space, I, God, I can't remember. <clears throat> I remember how I used to having to compress my entire hard drive <laughs> in order to stick an extra few like text files on it, you know? <laughs> Anyway, sorry, we're going off the subject of gaming hardware slightly, so... Well, we, we've kind of gone into the retro PC hardware, but it's still hardware, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we've we've talked about PCs a lot since the start of this particular show, so get, let's try and get back onto consoles in terms of hardware. What else can we talk about with console hardware? Because we went through things like Kinect and, you know, the Wiimotes and all the control Well, not all the controllers, but a lot of controllers... But is there anything else <clears throat> off the top of your head? Hardware-wise? Yeah. I can think of, but I think that's kind of the point of consoles, that you don't have crazy amounts of hardware to consider. You kind of have a few peripherals. You've got the machine itself, which doesn't really change. Yeah. And that's it. That's all you need to worry about. We as PC users kind of see it from the hardware, a hardware-first perspective. So, uh, you know, when we see a new console come out, the first thing we're saying is, you know, what CPU has it got? How much memory has it got? Why has it only got 32 gigs of RAM or 32 megs of RAM or whatever? You know, the original PlayStation had 2 megs of RAM. Mm -hmm. (laughs) How it managed to fit those games into 2 megs of RAM, I have no idea. There's a lot of clever switching and swapping of memory. There's a lot of clever stuff that goes on within consoles in general. I said, um, um, speaking speaking on MMO Buff and speaking to Adam, who's done professional game development... um, What's his second name? Adam Sarkast? He's a guy who's done Fortress Craft anyway, if you've heard of it. But um, he he said he's... I hosted a few shows with him uh, a while back and he's very knowledgeable. He's got a lot of of knowledge about how each console differs and how each one, you know, all the tricks that you need to do each one. But he mainly focused on audio stuff by the sounds of it, I think. And uh, yeah, it's interesting to, to hear some of the little tricks Again, I, don't, I haven't retained the information, unfortunately. The, the annoying thing is, I'm, I'm going to kind of, kind of go back to the... This, this is something that Steam mentioned a bit earlier when we were talking about console versus PC, but the fact that, that games are developed for console first is a particular problem when you want to play it on a very high-powered PC. Now, it's not so bad these days, in most cases, but I remember things like um, Deus Ex 2, Deus Ex Invisible War, uh, and Thief Dead, uh, Deadly Shadows which came right. out around the same sort of time, being woeful on the PC because they were designed for the Xbox, the original Xbox, the levels were really, really short to make it fit within the Xbox's limited memory. And the, so it loaded all the time. Hmm. And the controls were bad. The interface was crap. I mean, Skyrim, even quite recently, Skyrim's interface was developed for console. Yeah, it's so horrific. It's on a PC, it's awful. Yeah, you've got to install a mod to play it properly. I, I, it feels like XCOM's um, UI is the same. It feels like that's yeah. been developed for console. Um, not just because of the way it's laid out, but the way that your mouse interacts with the screen. It doesn't register immediately, you know? But see, it's a real engine, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, It the, doesn't mean anything, though. <laughs> well, it doesn't, but it's a first-person shooter engine, which has been turned into a turn-based strategy game. Yeah, well, it's still interesting. That, that, but Unreal's been used for all kinds of things, hasn't it? You can't really say it's just an FPS engine. Yeah. 
But I think with the mouse control, I think it's probably, yeah, it, it, it does seem a bit weird. And I, again, that bothers me a bit. It, well, well a the lot console thing games. does bother me. It bothers me because they haven't put the time in to port it well, or they haven't. They've had whatever constraints, and they just need to get it out. And it, and uh, Skyrim <laughs> especially, I had to mod it before I could actually play it. I yeah. had to mod the, the the UI, and I ended up modding nearly everything in the game because it was built for consoles. And it's like, did, come on! Did, did you mod it so that the men had bullies? Uh, yes, I did. Because I got the the female naked models, and you thought a bit of a quality was needed here. <laughs> yeah, and I thought I, it was because I went for the female ones, and then I thought, yeah. And then I, you know what? I actually went through a list of um, uh, of dick models to to actually choose <laughs> the relevant one, the one that looked the best with that matched the female one and matched the world and stuff. Well, they know the, the naked. Dick. I wasn't People's just looking at dicks. Out. It was the uh, you know the whole <laughs> whole naked man thing. So I spent quite a while looking at <laughs> looking at different. So you, so you, <laughs> you before you had this amazing game that you just modded, and you decided to spend several hours going through pictures of <laughs> 3D modeled penises and comparing them to the females I, to see if they were, if a, were a good fit. I found a very. <laughs> but there's some OCD thing go off in your head if that happens. I found a very realistic one that that did the job and it was probably the best looking penis on uh, whatever website nexus mods or whatever it is yes but yeah um i spent a while modding um modding uh, those kind of games in general i think you know that, that yeah i don't do it so much these days i don't mod as much as i used to um and yeah i mean are the, are the, do the games come out which support so much oh definitely yeah there's still a lot out there that support games anyway we're going off the subject of hardware again it's yeah. easy isn't it it's easy when you've <laughs> Got so much. <coughs> so what else have we got on the list there? What about uh, monitors? Yeah, monitors and screen. But we kind of covered the resolutions and stuff like that. But uh, like refresh rates, more specific. One, one thing that one thing that people have become very used to, and something that that was unheard of when we were playing stuff like Quake, um, is the low refresh rate of, or the relatively low refresh rate of monitors now. Like most monitors do sixty hertz. Yeah. Which means you get sixty fps. It used to hurt my eyes sixty hertz. Well, it does on a, on a, on a CRT because you've got low persistence, so it flickers like hell. Yeah. Uh, T Maybe TFTs it's... don't flicker so much. But we have all witnessed a 120 hertz monitor uh, and seen how, how much different it actually does. It's, it's like Beautiful. the difference between standard definition and HD. I don't care who you are, you can, you can tell that it's yeah, HD yeah. is mint, you know, in comparison. But the difference between 60 and 120 hertz is unfathomable. It felt so much smoother in general, didn't it? No tearing, yeah. no. It was gorgeous. Was this the um? Was this uh, Ben's PC at the land? No, it was uh, Greg's. Greg's, Greg's. Yeah, he's got rid of that of, since then. Of course he has. That it's Greg. <laughs> but uh, yeah, 120 hertz is beautiful. Um, just anything above 60, really. Are you? You'd think that 60 would be enough. I mean, when you see, see you, you know, you go and see a movie at a cinema and it's 25 fps, <laughs> and that's fine. You can deal with that. You can watch it on your TV at home, but then you see something when that's 60 hertz, like um, a news broadcast or something like that, where they've got like uh, high FPS footage and it looks really nice. But then you see 120 hertz, and it looks absolutely amazing. Hmm. And it's it's, it's a feeling thing we... more than more than a look though, because the look is the same essentially, isn't it? It's just that it feels like it has a, a higher frame rate. Which it yeah. would do as long as your graphics card can support it. The crazy thing is, though, is that we got used to that a long time ago with CRTs. We got mm. used to high frame rates um, and high refresh rates, and then it all went away for a while, and we all got stuck lumped with sixty or thirty. <clears throat> and now it's making a comeback. And but do you not you know, also think that monitors at the moment, the standard entry, you know, entry monitor, the fairly big, the widescreen to start off with by default. Yeah. I mean, the ones that I've got, they've just got DVI and VGA on the back, but HDMI is becoming a standard now with, with monitors. Yeah, yeah. And the lower end ones, they're all 60, but you can pay a fortune for 120 hertz ones for, for ones that are bigger than the standard. You know, you can still, you've always been able to do that with PCs. You've got the choice, haven't you? Yeah. And again, you've got the choice with consoles. There's nothing stopping you from getting a 55 inch or a 60 inch television or. Or whatever. Yeah, but the consoles only output sixty hertz anywhere at the yeah. maximum. Yes. <coughs> so you don't have Modern that option. Uh, no, not in terms of the hertz. No, but in terms of the the overall quality is not affected by the monitor. Really, is it? I mean, it. 
the but the experiences. Yeah, I suppose. Hmm. I think 60 is quite low. I think it's we've been putting up with 60 because there's been no alternative. But when you start to see what, like VR, for instance, is um, they're they're aiming for higher than 60 because 60 is a bit too choppy. Yeah. So the Oculus DK2 runs at 75. Their ideal target is 120 hertz, same as what what we want. Well, it's it's a similar comparison to um, uh, for audio frequencies for recording, like 44, 48. You know, eight, that's sixteen. Uh, no, that's but it's actually, a sim- Go on. It's a very different thing, though, isn't it? That's the uh, is it the the Ni- Nyquist effect where you no, need no. to have double the frequency of whatever the the frequency response to someone's ears are, so people can hear up to about twenty thousand hertz. Yeah, roughly. So in order to get it to sound right, you've got to double that. That's like a there's a it's an audio. I don't know. The, I don't know the science behind it. I was just literally going to talk about the the. The comparable difference between them. If you listen to something at eight thousand hertz, oh yeah, it's it's noticeably different from something at forty four thousand hertz. But forty four to forty eight, you can't really tell that much difference. No, because you again because you're mainly because of the human hearing range. But I forgot you where should- I was going uh, with with it. In fact, that whole point you were talking about one hundred and twenty hertz. All right, yeah. So the fidelity, bet- the difference between them is is fairly. Um, I was going to talk about the digital reasons for it. So, the higher ears are analog, yeah. Our ears are analog. At the end of the day, 120 hertz is a is a is something that's been put in place technically, you know, by hardware yeah. that that limits it to 120 hertz. Your ears, your eyes can obviously read much more than that because they're analog there's no real there is a comparison i'm sure i can't remember the again all the science behind it but the same thing applies with audio the the higher the the uh, the frequency rate the higher sam no, the more sample sorry the higher the sample rate the more samples it takes and the better it sounds to your ears but it's never going to sound as good as on analog so looking at a, a looking at a Stop laughing at me. <laughs> looking at a screen is never going to be as good as looking at a person doing something in front of you. Ever. <laughs> depends what they're doing. <laughs> it depends what they're doing on the screen. Uh. What do you mean, uh? What? <laughs> anyway, I, I did ramble like- a bit then. I think I maybe got my point across. I, I was trying to... I, I don't know. Go on. You did, but you, you, you open up a huge can of worms with the whole um, audio fidelity thing and maybe even visual fidelity, but... I don't think this is a place for that. No, I mean, we're t- yeah. yeah, we're talking specifically about hardware, but I was just saying that that's the there. There's no way to really. You can be elitist about it. You can talk about 120 to 160, but at the end of the day, it's not. It doesn't make that. It doesn't really, really affect your playing experience. I can play any game perfectly fine at 60. Yeah. As long yeah. as the frame rate doesn't drop below 40, maybe 45, 30, 50 for I me. Think, I think 30 is about the, the minimum, isn't it? Well, I'm sure there's a technical limitation, but a uh, technical minimum. But in terms of my eyes, I start but, yeah. noticing it seriously around about the 45, 50 there's, um, mark. There's, there's, there's a, I mean, I think it's 12 and a half FPS is the minimum to be able to perceive it as as moving as motion, right. which is what cartoons used to run at. Right, right. Um, so yeah, um, kind of moving slightly off what we've been talking about, but still in hardware what do we think about the steam controller and and the steam box and the you know the the whole idea that they're kind of crossing the boundaries of console and pc now because you've got essentially a pc a linux pc running pc games but with uh, a controller so (coughs) not all of the games on steam are going to support linux for one yeah i think it's linux it is well uh, it is yeah yeah it's predetermined hardware inside as well so any upgrading is going to be very limited um, I, I assume you stream the games like you do with s- s- no 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 it's, 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 it's actually a, a, a gaming grade machine uh, but it, t- it for me it kind of takes away from the whole like, personal computing element it's just another console because you can't do all the extra stuff you can do with a PC very easily with it Right, if I didn't have my laptop and be able to use Steam home streaming, yeah. I'd probably buy one because it's really it's really handy for the missus downstairs if we want to play games together. 
she can't come up here and watch me play it up here. There's just it's a PC is yours, isn't it? You know, you there's not really room for other people to gather around it. Me and Sam the other day was sat here like this, trying to get <laughs> on the camera. You know, it's uh, it's not the same. But downstairs on the big telly with the front room where three or four people can sit around, that appeals to me. Mm. Being able to take guess- my Steam library downstairs instead of being limited to my console titles. I guess this 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 whole Steambox thing is bringing up an old an old um, argument which people have pretty much forgot about now, which was when the first Xbox came out, everyone said, "Oh, it's just a PC in a in a in a box." Well, the Xbox. Well, the, well, that's, yeah, yeah, that's the original Xbox says. was 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 PC hardware. It was a power VR graphics mm. card and a an Intel CPU, I think. That's um, the thing. That's what all consoles basically are now, though. Max, yeah, no, yeah. Max are even basically PCs with a different operating system on them. They are PCs. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so what? Yeah, what's the? Well, no, it's just uh, the, the whole idea that the Steam Box is basically a console that's a PC. It's a new. It's it's something for a new generation. I've got nothing against it. I'll be honest with you. I think it's a great idea. I I'm not one of these people who goes no PC gaming is mine. It's mine, and no one else can play games. You know, I. I I, everyone is welcome if they want to get involved. If I can play PC games with Sam, if he could get hold of a, a Steam box, that would that would solve so many problems. Yeah, that is with, a nice thought. With gaming, because I, again, if Sam was here, he'd have a much. In fact, Sam should probably be here for this conversation because uh, mm-hmm. he's got a very different perspective on it from us. He does, I, yeah. I, that would be brilliant because there's only basically <coughs> one game that I can play with Sam if I don't go and play on my PS3, and that's Portal 2, and that's because it's cross-platform. Yeah. You know, it, how, that is an artificial limitation. I mean, there's no reason why people on a PS3 couldn't play Battlefield 3 with people on on the Xbox. The, well, I see a very gone. I, I was just going to say the uh, the cross-platform thing does give certain individuals an unfair advantage, or some would yeah. say it that way. And, and, and you know what gamers are like you're all whingy bastards basically <laughs> every single gamer including us every single one look at just just look at Lou just just look at him all right he is he, he imagine what he was like when he was younger imagine how annoying he was through that through my entire life <laughs> it, 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 you know <laughs> well it, it gamers generally like to complain. And gamers are always going to complain about anything they can complain about because there's so many of us now, and the more consoles get involved, the better. Now the Steam Box, I'm hoping might close that gap between console players and PC gamers. Maybe. Hopefully. Hopefully, I mean, yeah. it's up to me. As a, can you plug in a keyboard and mouse to the Steam Box? Yes. If it's you a PC. can. Are you sure though? Has that been announced? Yeah. It's, and can it you configure? It it runs is, in big picture mode, so you 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 don't really. It it will be sandboxed like a a, a console, so it won't be this, it won't yeah. be basically a small PC because otherwise, what's the point? It's just a PC then. Yeah, so it's like a game media server basically with with hardware that can cope with playing the actual game. So it downloads yeah. onto the PC. Can you upgrade the hard drive? Is it massive or? I think there's there's fixed hardware ones, but there's also stuff like the piston box, which is like a, a basically a PC that's about this big. Um, it's a f- it's a full power PC. I, I I don't see problems with it as long as the controls the controlling system is available to both parties. Well, it's got its own pad, hasn't it? It's got the Steam uh, the Steam controller. You know what this might be? Sorry, I just had a really exciting thought. This might be the ability for us PC gamers to start owning console players like proper kicking their ass because we're playing with keyboard and mouse and they're playing with shitty controllers <laughs> and getting them to buy into the the keyboard and mouse argument so uh, from what i've read the um the steam box can use a keyboard and mouse but the preferred control method will be the steam controller yeah which is getting developed in parallel um uh, going away from that um when I've introduced gamer friends of mine that are like solely console to PC games, they really can't get away with the keyboard and mouse. Um, they can use it and they can play the game, but they they genuinely don't like it. So I think that if you try to attract the console market to the Steam Box, 
they're just going to end up using the controller. Right. So as soon as they get in the start getting their ass kicked by PC gamers who put in just as much time as they do. Yeah, they'll just well, say you're well, cheating, you dickhead. Exactly. They'll complain. Exactly what yeah, you just said. They'll, they'll complain. Com- they, they won't. They won't do anything about it. They'll just complain and say that it's unfair. All right. Well. Well. Fuck you lot then, right? If you're going to do that, <laughs> fuck you lot. Yeah, Accept responsibility your for your shitness, you know? Can you just excuse me a few minutes? Yes, no problem. Yeah, um, yeah so I, I don't know. I'm, I'm behind it. I, I like that idea. And you know how many times you guys have talked about new things like VR last week, for example, and, and I yeah. shun it. But this, I, I don't know. I like the idea of the Steam Box. I don't see what it's offering over and above a modest PC. Cheapness. I, mm, is it modest though? Is it is it a good platform to play games on? Is it going to be high spec? It's it's a modest PC spec. It's not the best PC in the world, not by a long shot. It's not the worst either. Um, it will play everything at out now currently. Well, you know, at, at 1080p. But the, the rig that I've got, and I'm sure the rig that you've got, is is capable of doing that and more. So there's future proof in there, and you get the configurability. Right. I think as well the uh, the price point is slightly more than the consoles. Right. Okay. I I don't know. I haven't looked at it in any detail, so I don't really know. But even if it is around the same as a console, or I would have thought it'd be less. I'll be honest with you, but maybe not. Maybe it's not going to be. Surely it would make sense for for you to. All right, look at look at again people like Sam who play consoles their entire life who wants to get in on PC games. It's a perfect market for them. There's so many times that he he I wants to play games. I can't see the issue with, with if you want to get into PC games, getting a PC. Right. Okay. The Steam Box offers a convenient little box that does everything for you. You plug a controller into it and you work. Yeah, it. I, right. I appreciate Every, that. We we know computers. We know how yeah. to use computers. Sam would not buy into that. He's not interested in... There's one in thing that is a massive uh, like bad point for the Steam Box when it comes to that. Yes, it's a little bit more expensive than a console, um, but it's a little bit less expensive than a PC, but the only thing you can do on it is play games. Yeah, it's, it doesn't make a if lot of sense, If you get a PC, it? even a modest Mike. PC, which might cost oh, £100 more, no. um, Move it closer then to you could do... So Hello. much more on it. Yes, but people like Sam don't want to do anything else on it. No, but if people like Sam, you know, you can do word processing, you can browse the internet, you can play internet games, you can. It's for me. Well, it's, they, it's, it's 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 a bit of a moot item because these people have already I, got I tablets and PCs and laptops to do those things that they want to do, and the laptops that they have don't aren't capable of playing games. They don't want the inconvenience of having a big bulky desktop. And a, and a monitor, and having the space for it on top of the television and the laptop and everything else they've got. I think I agree with Chris on this. I, I think that, that we are enthusiasts and we look. We, we like to play with our things. We like to go in and alter config files mm. and put in IP addresses and stuff like that. We like to do all of that stuff, um, and really have a feel of having control of it. But Sam, I think, would just be bewildered by a lot of it and he wouldn't want the hassle he just wants to play games yeah, whereas exactly. we want to play games but we want to be able to mess with them and and, and tweak them to the nth degree and change our sensitivity to, to have five significant figures and all that sort of stuff that you, people who just want to play games are not interested in we, we are willing to sacrifice our time an entire night to just configuring one game getting it working whereas someone like Sam just wants to jump onto it and play it that, that but it does, it, does, it does raise the question, though. That, that, that like Steve said, it, it does. Is there a point to it? If if it is just an expensive console and it doesn't offer you anything apart from uh, like some back catalogue of Steam games, which are probably already available on console anyway, and are very good, then is it worth it? <coughs> I I I'm going to suggest Sam gets one. Of course, it's worth it because he can then play games with me. What I see the Steam Box as is Valve's personal attack on Windows. Because they hate Microsoft. And they are very vocal about that. And they're also very vocal about their support for Linux. Okay, well, I I didn't know that Valve were against Windows so much. 
I can understand people who are against Windows, but you know, at the end of the day, it makes you know makes my career, so I can't really say much about it. But I, you know, I, I that that may be, but it's still to me. I think it's still got a place in the market. Looking at current trends, looking yeah. at how people use technology, I think the Steam Box is perfect. So uh, the Steam Box prices are going to range from about five hundred pound. Up to the best part of four thousand. Alienware duration you get. Yeah. So this is my point. If you're going to be spending that type of money, you may as well get a PC. You can do more with it, and there's a bigger catalogue of games already there for you. But I said that the there's only controllers that already work for it. If anyone spends four thousand pounds on a gaming system, they will though. They will. People who have been like, I don't want all the faff of, of a computer, but I want the hardware. But I want the I want the, the access to the games. I want to play with my friends. I want to... There'll be other things on it as well. You know, you'll be able to Skype people. Or, well, not Skype, because they hate Microsoft. But, you know what I mean? They'll, they'll have something <laughs> on there like that. Well, the Steam friend list. They'll have <coughs> video chatting and all kinds of stuff and streaming going on it eventually. And it'll be upgradable as they, you know, like all consoles are these days. One of the uh, the Steam boxes here that I'm looking at, the Web Hallam one, is a similar sort of spec uh, to my PC, and is more expensive than I actually paid to build it. It will be because it's an in integrated system. That's how they. Yeah. That's how marketing works. People. That's, people yeah, that's, want that's convenience. Exactly, exactly what Alienware do, and exactly what Apple do. Yeah. It's the same stuff, but then yeah. because it's branded and because it's proprietary and because it's all been tested together, they're selling something which just works. Mm. And there's a guarantee uh, that it'll just work as well, usually, of some sort. I think it'll be a flop. I th I, I, I think VR will die before that. I, I, I think the <laughs> I think it'll be it's gonna Screw fall. Screw you! I, I think I think the Valve have not made a have not put a foot wrong yet, despite the fact that they've had quite a lot of um, hiccups in terms of like the, the Half Life Two being uh, beta being leaked. And all the stuff being stolen off their servers, and you know, even the fact that when Steam first came out, people were really vocal about how much they hated it, and they hated the idea of not having a physical copy of the game. I remember Valve, that. Yeah. Yeah, but Valve have proven over time that they get it right time and time again. Now it's not even it that. I don't even care that it's Valve behind it. I just think it's a good idea. I, I, if. I don't expect you to agree with me at the end of the day, but I think I don't think there's. I, I think it's it's. I think it's got potential to yeah. be very good. If you get a, a micro PC like a, um, I don't know what they call them now the uh, the form factor BTX or I don't know, <laughs> one of the smaller systems which you can still get a very powerful rig for, right? I've got a NAS you get, doing that. Yeah. yeah. If if you get Windows eight point one installed on it and you run it in Metro with the full screen thing. You've basically got a Steam box, but better for cheaper. Well, yeah, and you got with the potential off. for more problems and less support, and not being able to play your games immediately when you boot it up. Interesting. And, and, and possibility of pressing the wrong button and getting lost in the menus. Right. You, you wouldn't. You wouldn't believe how many people are shit scared of that kind of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good point because Linux never goes wrong, does it? <laughs> I didn't say. I didn't say. It was, I couldn't care if it was Windows or Linux. It's an integrated system that's been tested, as Lou just yeah. said, as one box. Xbox 360s massive problems. Original Xbox massive problems. But they have support. Three, massive problems. If your PC breaks, no one's there to help you unless you get a 3XS system from Scan. Other people are available. You know, that, whatever. It's like unless you get a pre-built system from a PC manufacturer and you're not going to get well you do get alienware and razor pcs and that unless you buy that and it's all set up for you you still have to fuck around with it if you, you buy your on. components from scan you can actually get them to assemble them and recommend the hardware configuration for you but they mm -hmm. won't be culpable for it if it, if it goes wrong they, they are actually they've got a warranty on the uh, the, the, the 3xs stuff does yeah but the, the um, map, go on People who aren't interested in the techie side of it will buy consoles and will buy established consoles by big names. People who are interested in the tech side of it, you may as well get a PC. No, no, if they're interested in the tech side, yes, I agree. I never buy one unless Steam Home in-game streaming, whatever it is, didn't exist. 
and I, yeah. I could you know I had the spare money and I wanted to put an extra PC downstairs that we could play on but I can totally see the appeal to people because I think again most most console games do come out on PC I think this this could be a new revolution for PC games possibly if it takes off and if people start buying it it's easier for developers to develop PC games than is console games and it always will be I believe uh, it's it's more rela- well it's easier to support on PC because they've got even though um, the consumer won't have access to the hardware and the back end and stuff Steam will make some way of allowing developers to plug into it and get debug information of some sort so that will be a bonus that will get Console developers get that with STKs and all the stuff that they get on top. But getting that from a, a user, I imagine, is quite difficult unless they an online. They might do it online these days with bug reports and things. But anyway, um, going off on a tangent again, I, I, I can't agree with you. I'm sorry. I think it's. I think it will take off. What about the loss of the modding scene then? We're not losing anything because we're still going to be here. The PC gamers are still going to be playing PCs. If the Steam box takes off and it becomes the mainstream, aren't you going to get uh, the case of these developers developing the games on the PC platform more towards a Linux than a Windows system? Um, because well, that would be the one that would be selling. With I think most, that's what they do anyway. Yeah, most most games that are, well, most indie games at least that are developed are very easily. Most of the engines allow you to deploy to either platform very easily now. It's it's yeah. less of a problem than it used to be. Um, but yeah, I, I still, uh, there's time will tell. Time will tell. Time will tell with everything, as as we all know. But I mean, I'm, I won't adopt it. I won't be a, an early adapter or anything like because I've got no need for it, as you said. It's not that I don't want it to succeed. I just genuinely can't see the market for it. Because you're a PC gamer who's f- quite close-minded by the sounds of it. Uh, but I've also got a hell of a lot of consoles. And I've I been playing follow, consoles I'll, longer I'll, than I'll, I have I'll, been playing yeah, PCs. But we, we, me and you, me and Steve specifically because Lou doesn't have as many consoles, we are a, a very unique type of, of gamer. You don't see ga- lots of gamers that have um, a, a big console collection and a big interest in PC gaming. You see people maybe with one or two consoles or whatever, or, or one console, and then they play PC on ga- games on PCs, or mm. they'll play primarily on a console, and occasionally they'll have a, a game that they can only get on PC that they'll play on it, or something like that. You don't see many people who play across all of it, I don't think. And we, we, so. we, you and I, have absolutely no need for the Steam Box, as you've quite rightly pointed out. Technical, it's it's too it's too limiting for us as PC gamers, and we've no need for it because one, we've got all the games on Steam anyway, and two, we've got consoles to play the other games that might come out for a Steam Box as well as other consoles. I think it might bring more games to the PC market again. I think it might bring more more um, focus if it takes off to the PC market and they will not release a game on uh, I think it's very unlikely for developers to ever release like a Linux version of it unless they are a Linux advocate and hate Windows it's I mean like my well my closing statement is just to be simple that if people want to play uh, have a console experience I think they'll buy a console if if they're even looking at the Steam box, all we're going to see straight away is there's about 12 different specifications here. What do I do? Oh, they've all got different CPUs, got different. So they're going to have to have a technical aspect to them anyway. Mm. Yeah. Because it's not just a case of there. There's only one Steam box you buy it off the shelf. Everything works with it. Yeah. It's not like that. It's not that straightforward. So the lay person is going to go console because there's only one Xbox One. There's only one PS4. It's an interesting argument. It, it well. is very. <laughs> Nearly no, won. I think it it is because obviously when people buy a console, they don't care what's in it. You know, how many console owners actually know what the what's in the what hardware is in the console? I don't even, and I care. A I don't. Bit. I, exactly. I don't know what's in any of my consoles. The, the the most recent ones, I can tell you with the older ones because I was interested in that stuff. But my Xbox 360 downstairs, I don't know what CPU speed. Don't know how much RAM. No, no. clue. I whatsoever. did look. I do look them up every time they come out, but I don't ever really yeah, retain, retain the information. It. Yeah, well, as as we said, time will tell. It's not the end of the day. If if I, you know, it's not I win. I told you so, or anything. I I, I think it's a good idea. I think it does have a market. 
you've got very valid arguments. I'm not saying I'm not naysaying uh, anything there, but I just I just think that I don't know. I, I said I'm thinking I'm thinking directly of Sam here. You know, people like Sam who have PC gamer mates. It it perf it's suiting perfectly. But if he's going to spend seven hundred pound. He may as well get a PC. But he won't. Though he's got a PC, and it he would he would never. He, yeah, he so why is he going to go and spend seven hundred pound on a Steam box? <laughs> right. So I'll tell you what. I'd love him to be here because I really want to. I yeah. really want to know his opinion. I'd we love need to his see, opinion, really. I'd, I'd love to see um, if he'd prefer to spend three hundred, four hundred quid on a new graphics card and plug it into his existing PC, which probably wouldn't happen because he'd have to upgrade everything else with it, um, or buy a Steam box for five hundred quid. Yeah, but Lou said he built his rig for seven hundred pound, and the five hundred pound Steam box is the lowest spec one, so not actually guaranteed to play all of the current games. Mm. No, That's, so you yeah. want to get that one. In fact, but, that'll probably just run indie stuff, won't it? Yeah, there's going to, there's going to be they have to for marketing reasons they have to offer offer some kind of advantages or guarantees or something like that. I mean, it's up to the developers at the end of the day. But Steam are also going to be responsible for providing the hardware and making sure that it's con compatible with each other. And the, the interesting thing is that we we are able, or we will be able to, and we kind of can at the moment get an ex uh, experience of what a Steam box is going to be like because we can run Steam in big picture mode. Mm -hmm. You can whack a controller in. You can you'll be able to plug the Steam controller into a PC. I think it'll be USB. Of course. Um, it might even be wireless in some way. I, I don't know for certain. Um, It'd be crazy if it wasn't actually thinking about it. Mm. You know what's just dawned on me, and this is hardware related. All PCs, sorry, all uh, consoles and all um, like Macs and Linux and everything like that, everything has come around to the PC architecture. After all these years of building their own hardware systems, look at the PS3. It was a massive like hardware, in terms of the hardware in the actual unit, it was a huge failure. For the developers because nobody took it there's only maybe one or two games that actually took full advantage of what that machine could do because it was so complicated to program didn't for. have like nine logical threads and you could only use them in kind of uh like core bunches so it, it, there was yeah it was something like that with the cpu is um cube processor emotion, or something like that is this the emotion remember. engine in a ps2 it's the evolution of the emotion engine <coughs> the thing is emotion engine was a ps2 i mean I, i've got a theory behind that i, th I think it's actually w w when you think about it Back then, there was everyone was making hardware, um, and it was simplistic hardware, and it got more and more complicated. And as it got more and more complicated, it got harder to reproduce. It got easier just to buy in hardware. It's the same way that with software now, with game engines, there's just a few game engines that power every game. Mm. It used to be everyone would make their own engine, so they'd spend you know a year or two of R and D on making an engine, then build a game at the end of it. That's what id Software was still doing when they made Rage, before realizing very quickly that that was not a way to make money. No, <laughs> you, you can't do that anymore. You've got to you've got to go with what's something very complicated that people have built over years and years and years, battle tested, and just use that and build on top of it. So hardware. Exactly, and that's progress in general. That's how all things progress. Well, we've been, we've seen the wild west of hardware, where everyone was trying to do their own thing. <laughs> now there's just a few few good. Uh, there's definitely a few there, cowboys out there. There are two things coming out with AMD and Nvidia uh, soon, and what they're doing is they're trying to bridge the gap between. Um, <sighs> forgotten. There's there's two new <laughs> technologies, new like APIs that are coming out from both of them. One's called Mantle from AMD, and the other one's um, it's Nvidia. Nvidia's version of it, but I can't remember the oh. name of it off the top of my head. But they're yeah. both trying to solve the same problem. But Intel and AMD are still doing the same thing, and now it you know Nvidia and AMD are, are doing the same thing. Like, it used to be well, ATI, in, didn't it? But yeah, is it, well, Nvidia have done the Maxwell architecture, which is. Um it's purely about getting it to run more thermally efficient and more, less use less power, basically. Yeah. Because we reach a point now where the, the the stupid amounts of coolant needs going to GPUs. Yeah, I mean, it, the it, size it, of my it's graphics card. It's ridiculous. Yeah, the, the, the one that was in Greg's was just it's just enormous. It was like a bigger than the motherboard almost, and I've most of put, it was just cooling. I've just put a link to uh, the mantle document that I'm talking about. Uh, I've in... heard of mantle. I can't remember what it is. 
It's a, it's a groundbreaking graphics API that promises to transform the world of game development to help bring better, faster games to PC. Read on to discover blah, blah, blah. So, it's what basically actually DirectX is it? or OpenGL, isn't it? It's, 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 it's a something like API. that, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, it doesn't matter to, to me as an indie dev that's using an engine that's got a proprietary... Kind of, it's got it's using PhysX, NVIDIA's PhysX. It uses Beast Leap, Light Mapper. It uses uh, an audio engine. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it uses all these other engines to make itself. You know, make make the whole package. And I don't care how it all works. I just call a method and do something, and then it's up to Unity to do the the rest of that for me. Mm. So that's the kind of the kind of way that, as you just said, you know, that game development is going. We're all we're all wanting to get results quicker. And that's the only reason that I can actually write a game now without a lot of effort learning C++, etc. Because I've got engines. Of course. I mean, you, you, if you're making a game, you shouldn't need to worry about how you do the, the, the kind of... The, the maths behind moving triangles around the screen. You want to be making a game. Yeah. Go and it's the same with hardware. I was just going to say, apparently Plants vs Zombies is optimised for mantle. Yeah. Fuck. What what each of the what each of them are doing? Uh, they're offering incentives to developers. Develops, so developers. Plants vs Zombies. Does that really need next generation <laughs> graphics capabilities? I mean, come on. Probably not. Um, Mantle and the other one. They're they're both offering uh, incentives to developers to develop solely for their platform. They are yeah. compatible between each other, but it's uh, if you if. Battery. I can't remember what the incentive is, but they'll they, yeah, as long as you put the logo on and you actually develop it for. Uh, mantle, and you'll get something. I don't know. I can't remember. But um, yeah, it's 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 interesting that there's still two companies doing that, but nobody else is a player in that field. It would be. It would be. I think it would be a very risky thing to do to actually sit there and develop your own graphics API. I mean, that'd be crazy. That'd be like coming up with a new architecture for a computer. Mm. You know, why would you go away from what's already there? Even like it's like we said, even Apple bit the bullet and got rid of well, power pc why well there's i can answer that question why would you do it because because if you've got the same experts developing hardware and technologies for many many years they're going to come up with similar ideas it's new fresh ideas and fresh companies that come into these things this is where oculus vr came from this is you know they come from fresh people they happen to be a huge company now because of being bought out but you know it's it it all it all comes together eventually. We're all, we, the, you know. The interesting thing is, you mentioned Oculus VR, but Oculus, the Oculus product itself is just a mishmash of things that are already out there. It's a Galaxy yeah. Note screen, you know, with a with a strap on it and uh, some other technology. It's 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 basically loads of of technologies put together to make a VR unit. Yeah. Well, again, so, that's what most things are these days, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. But it, that, that's what I mean. If you were to try and develop something completely from scratch, you'd be putting yourself at such a massive disadvantage that there'd be no point in doing it. And the same, the same argument applies yeah. to engines, as you said earlier. Yeah. You know, if you, if you start developing your own engine, you're wasting so much time when someone else has already done the work for you. Yeah. In no established field does anyone ever work from fundamentals. No. It just doesn't happen. Not in any industry. I said when I again, I, this is one thing I was actually trying to explain to uh, one of my clients. Uh, uh, I'm a software developer for a living if anyone is listening and doesn't already know that but I I use libraries and frameworks um, f for everything that I do and I'm talking everything from the layout uh, I use things like Bootstrap and uh, Angular, uh, things like that and then on the back end I'll use tons of libraries to speed up all of the monotonous stuff that I have to do on a daily basis. I use things like AutoMapper, which will map domain objects to data objects. Um, I'll use uh, I'll use validation engines to fluently validate classes and things. And there's all kinds of things that are already out there. And trying to explain that, I recently explained it to a client and get them to actually accept the fact that I don't know everything, <laughs> you know. Basically, and you don't need like, to because experts have already done the the, the legwork of the, 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 the complicated stuff, so that you can just use it. I said, I said, I said exactly the same to them. I said, look, you know, at the end of the day, I could probably write any of these libraries myself because at the end of the day, they're all written in C sharp, and I could work it out eventually. But that's not the point. They've already been written. Why not just reuse what's already there? And the same applies for everything: hardware, software, game development. Yeah, that's it. They're the only things in the world. <laughs> Pretty much, are the only things in my world, apart from my wife, my cats, and my guinea pigs as well. 
I know this. You don't, don't uh. say friends. No, I didn't say friends. Sorry. All right, I include friends in that as well. Yay! Yes. Right. So, should we move on to another another hardware subject? Because we've been rambling on about PCs versus consoles and how <laughs> shit the Steam subject. boxes. Well, it is. Yeah. It, well, it is, but it's been done a million times by lots of lots of other people. Okay. Um, Lou touched on this while we're in the middle of the whole um, Steam box argument, but um, what if, what's everyone's thoughts on the uh, the proliferation of wireless technology? Can I can I say something about that? No. Can I demonstrate something about that? <laughs> Go on. Then. See that? Yeah. You see that? Yeah. <laughs> see that? That's I'm what I think of wireless. Wireless can fuck off. Right. Because any anything with a battery in it is already a pain in the ass. Any time that I've had a a mouse that's been wireless, I've ha- I've got one that's rechargeable. Um, but I have consistently went back to wired keyboard, wired mouse, wired speakers, wired headphones, because the fidelity yeah. is better again. It's not as convenient. However, when they get when they get wireless right and it's not crap, then I will be the first I'll be the first to take it up because I hate wires. I hate just all of this shit. Right. <laughs> Um, that that is the back of my. That's just that you can't even see it. But I've got so many wires in my life, from you know recording yeah. studio stuff to PCs, gamers, console. Oh. Go on. <laughs> no, I'm with you guys up to a certain point. Uh, when I built my latest uh, PC, I was reading reviews on my because I was trying to decide like which new one to get, and I got tempted by this wireless mouse which is a bluetooth wireless mouse more importantly it's a blue light bluetooth wireless light which means it uses fuck all power this I, I got this 11 months ago it's still on the same set of batteries <laughs> that's pretty good that's pretty impressive it doesn't that's look very comfortable includes, to use though it is actually it fits in the hand quite nice and it's got uh, it's it's actually got a trackpad built into the side of it Does obviously it depends on the <laughs> look. yeah it does <laughs> Yeah, perfect. <laughs> uh, um, and with it being Bluetooth, it's got uh, an operating frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. So as far as the actual refresh rate of the position goes, it's the same as a wired. Right. And it's light enough. It's it, it it's actually got a force feedback unit built in as well, which I've disabled because it annoys me. But if you're that type of person, you could have the vibration switched on. That would probably run the battery down quite a bit as well. I yeah. imagine it would. Um, but no, the only one issue is, and it's happened a handful of times in, like, say, 11 months, is that every now and again, it, well, in the game, it has froze for a nope. couple of seconds. No, I'm, I'm out. Yeah, the, I'm the, out. That would, that would but, be it. <laughs> but I'm not sure whether that's something to do with the mouse or with the my setup of the Bluetooth. I, I haven't got time for that. I've got time for a plug a <laughs> mouse that's plugged in. That? You know what? I occasionally I got time to bleed. Um the, this this um motherboard at the moment, the USB slots are all knackered. All of them. I've unplugged things and plugged them in so many yeah. times it's they're knackered. So occasionally when I touch like a mouse you'll hear a dun as Windows re registers a USB device. Uh, but as long as I don't touch anything, everything works perfectly constantly, all the time, no issues. Well, my motherboard actually came with its own uh, it, its own Bluetooth transmitter, which oh, nice. isn't a cable long enough that I can show you. But it's basically uh, it's that rectangular thing sat on top of the box at the back. Um, that acts as a wireless repeater as well. What for your wireless internet? Yeah, if I was running the PC on wireless, but I'm not. Yeah, yeah, I I don't either. In fact, yeah. when I had my house redone, I had wires. I had network cables put in every single wall. Every room yeah. has got network cables hanging out of a skirting board somewhere. Nice. <laughs> but as far as well, this wireless device goes anyway. I'm very happy with it. And a mouse is normally the thing you'd be most critical of. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You're blatantly not a real PC gamer, so let's uh, move on. <laughs> well, no. It is, I mean, it isn't. The, the thing is. I don't mind the wireless um, controller for my Xbox because you sit a w- a way away from a console. You've got a p- you've got a big screen on the wall or whatever. You got a console in your, your, your you know under your, your your screen, and then you're sat on a sofa on the other side of the room. That makes yeah. sense. On a PC, when the wires are already long enough 
they don't really get snagged if you get them right. I just don't see why you would go wireless. Any of you ever use I've these? seen them, yeah. The, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 are they any good yet, those things? Right. I, They're I actually got, all right. I got them when I, you know, when I moved all my stuff upstairs because I was downstairs for ages all this. And then, um, because I, I couldn't be asked running a cable up the stairs and blah, 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 blah. Can we explain what it is first? Because obviously yeah, we know what it yeah. is. Yeah, okay. So this is a this is a home plug. Um, you get basically a network port on it, a little reset switch there um, that allows you to register it. But you can plug this into any socket in your house as long as you're on the same ring main, by the way, or you're on the same... Um, if everything's connected... I, I, again, there's a technical it's thing behind it. It's got to be on the same ring main. Is it the ring main? Because I'm sure I've got my upstairs and downstairs are on different ring mains. Yeah, and but it, works. It, it will still go across, but you'll get a significant drop in speed. Uh, well, it works, it works quite well for me. So basically, all you do, you plug it into your wall, plug your network cable into there, and plug it into your PC. So essentially, you've got kind of an almost LAN type thing, and it runs through the power in your house. And it's um, you get a bit of noise occasionally. You know, you get a little bit of problems with it, but I found it okay. But what's the speed you get? Because I remember when it came out, there about forty meg. Uh, I can't remember what this one is, but it was pretty good. It was. It's I not like a hundred meg, but yeah, it's it's above um, fifty-four megabit. All right, so it's nice. it, it it is considerably faster than uh, than wireless. Oh yeah, definitely. Nice. Um, I mean, even like three hundred megabit wireless is is not three hundred megabit, is it, ah. it at all? Um, it, but I mean, I got. Lie. Yeah, I got f was five G wireless. Is it wireless G or wireless? What's the the most recent one? Wireless N. Four G. Oh 4G. no, wireless N. Uh -huh. uh, wireless N. That's fifty four megabits. Um, What's the five gig one? There's a five gigahertz ah. brand, uh, band that you, you yeah. use. I've, I've got that one on my router, and it's it's okay. But unfortunately, all your wireless devices have to support it as well before you can use yeah. it. Um, no, but I, 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 wireless. I, I love the idea. I really do wish wireless worked. I, but I've never really had much, much good experience of it. I mean, I'm, I sit in the bathroom with my tablet, which is on wireless, and it doesn't work. Sit in this room, it works fine, and the bathroom's there, like it's mm. a foot away from me. See, the only problem with wireless when you're talking about uh, like communications over distances is that walls ain't safe. The, the NC through, no, mm. and it doesn't Claws bounce. NC through. Doesn't well, the other thing is, well. and it's it's something that's become more and more of a problem recently for me, um, and certainly it probably has been for you two as well. Is as more and more people get wireless devices, when everyone's got a wireless router in the street, suddenly you have to find yourself tweaking the channels and getting finding somewhere in the bandwidth uh, the spectrum that isn't full Such of crap. Yeah. yeah. I've had to do that for friends because basically every every single wireless router runs on channel one six on or twelve I think it is. Um, so I, I've yeah. got to put them like three or nine or something somewhere in between. Um, so wireless still has its problems. I guess that's less of a problem now that they've opened up the um, the frequency range. The frequency range, yeah. When they've, they've got rid of all of the uh, the TVs, analog TVs, so they've got that range. But it's still. Uh. That's an See, issue. my approach to getting over that problem is brute force. You just get a router that's got a much more powerful antenna than any one of your neighbours, and you yep. just drop <laughs> their signal. That's it. That, so that is exactly what I problems. did. <laughs> However, I still avoid using the wireless as much as I can. I've got yeah. one, uh, one, two. I've got three five-port, one-gig network switches in my house. Um, a, a gig, obviously, gig network cards in everything that I've got. Uh, apart from the consoles, I think they're 100 meg, I think. Yeah. I mean, the PS4 might be a gig, I'm not sure. But I don't think it will be. It doesn't need to be. You don't really need more than 100. It's for file copy in the gig, really. Yeah. Uh, and even then, my hard drives uh, stop, you know, restricting yeah, the amount. Yeah, they'll be the bottleneck. Of, yeah, I get like 25 meg a second or something down download. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I, I always want to be plugged in. I think I always will. I don't think I'll ever trust it. I think I'm one of those. Maybe, maybe that's what that that that's what we'll be when we get old. You know, like old people now, they are they hate technology and they're like, oh, I can't go. Oh, I might break it. We'll be like, no, oh, no, oh, we we we'll be us okay with technology in general. But any of the modern like upgrades to the shit that we're used to, maybe that that'll be our. See, there's uh, there's there's one <coughs> communication method that. Is being developed is real, 
does work, needs a bit more work uh, doing on it, but that is that is the only type of uh, like comms that will take over, wired for consistency and for speed, and that's quantum communication. Yeah. Where you create a quantum pair and basically separate them, and whatever happens to say part A automatically happens to part B instantaneously. Yeah. And they've done tests um, in the Netherlands. Uh, I've read some about this. They're using five five quantum pairs to make four bit communication with a parity bit weren't they talking about um, is this anything to do with teleporting because I'm sure they've been doing stuff it's, with it's teleporting called entanglement. it's called entanglements tele- yeah. it's not teleport it's entanglement so it, you basically you've got pairs and if you can separate them among massive distances and they'll still do the same thing instantaneously as if they're next to each other how, how does that is there That's an easy way it's quantum, it's quantum tunneling isn't it uh, yeah so the theory is basically when you separate these, they create uh, a, a wormhole between themselves through the fabric of space-time. So they are actually connected to each other always. Have, have they proved this works? Yes. Yeah. See, that just met, bends my mind, the fact that quantum physics is actually... Well, they've made quantum ...can be computers. applied to anything. Yeah, quantum computers. There's some IBLs, nice videos on uh, that. IBM sell them. I, I obviously don't keep up to date with all this science malarkey, do I? <coughs> Later on, I'll send you some got to be like a nation to afford one. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> I am my own nation, but I'm <laughs> it's very you've different. Got own, it, you've got in own, my own mind. You've got your own TLD. Yeah. Dot Chris. Dot Chris. <laughs> dot Spiky. <laughs> yeah. And it's interesting. This could, the whole thing about communications. There's also wireless power. There's inductive power. Where I, you I can was, have again. Wireless, I was basically. looking stuff up like that. Yeah, you can have cables fitted into your wall, or like a, a grid fitted into your wall, and then I think it connects to the back of your TV. Then you just hang your TV up on the wall, or even move it away from the wall. It'll still be powered it's, by the inductive. Uh, it's not a grid; it's a coil. Yeah, I was trying to the think. Bomb of the bomb is that uh, if you have got this coil inserted in your wall, which is basically just going to be a massive ring of copper, mm. basically yeah. inserted in your wall, you can't have nothing else around it. So like you can't have any, electri- uh, <laughs> any electrical supplies running through it, no pipe work running through it. You can't have a window there, obviously. Mm. So it's it's still quite a, quite a cumbersome technology. You can get the charge pads for your phone, yeah, yeah, but they've got to be in phone. contact with them. So hmm. that's like, like to me, yeah, you've actually got to put your phone on top of it. Oh, so you charge. don't have to connect it, you just have to have it on yeah. top, yeah. Which is yeah. practically the same as connecting it, because you still <laughs> got to take it to a specific location and leave it there. Yeah. Mm. So th- we're not there yet, but it's advancing. Um, I what really interests me. I mean, this the speed of technology and and hardware advances. We know it's related to Moore's law generally for the release of CPUs, you know, GPUs that kind of that kind of stuff. But it's it, it intrigues me as to how advanced we're going to be by the time we die. What what will we see? What will be the last thing we see before we, you know, like technology wise? What will be the next big thing? At the moment, tablets seem to be the, you know, tablets and handheld stuff. I know there's, I know there's. I'm talking about the like consumer level stuff that it's easily accessible and easily affordable for people because we all know R and D occurs about you know all kinds of subjects all over the world, but. In terms of widespread user stuff, I mean, do you think we'll have teleporters? Do you think we'll have? We already have teleporters. Cars. We... Sorry. That's Teleport cars. We have cars, cars as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the, the, there's Why active teleporters teleport available now, but it's only on a very small scale. Obviously, that can be scaled up. So, what? What? Teleporters. Um, what? In what respect? Where, where have we got teleporters? Um, the the. There's been experiments uh, done with teleporters for consumer price, level stuff. So I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, but that's where this stuff comes from. Oh no, no, so I'm just saying we know R&D that all this R and D's going on. But by the time we die, do you think that? Do you think we will see teleportation as a commonplace thing? As a means of travel. Well, uh, maybe getting inanimate objects from one place to another. Inanimate objects, possibly. Because there's less risk there, and it's just a monetary risk there, isn't it? Rather than a well, life. With a life, it's not a case of just reconstructing all the atoms in the same configuration they were. There's actually a, a, there's something there that we don't understand. If you were to take a brain apart piece by piece and put it back together again, would that person sleep and be alive? You've got a, you've got another kind of worms here, which is if you can teleport something, you can replicate something perfectly because it's the yeah. same thing. 
Yeah, you just don't yeah. destroy the original. <laughs> you know, teleportation is basically the equivalent of copying files. Yeah, it's going it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna, If it was to happen, it would cause a lot of problems because everything would become worthless. Uh, no, that's copying, though. It's not. Teleportation isn't cloning, is it? There's a distinct no, tele- difference between moving one thing to an, moving a file into copying a yeah, file. Yeah, but the teleportation normally, if you digitize something, you move it to a digital means to another place and then you reconstruct mm. it. But if you can digitize something and then just reconstruct it without destroying the original, in fact, destroying the original is, is probably harder than just copying it. Yeah. Because you've got to find some way to, to remove all the atoms or the, mm. the components. This isn't really games. No, this I was, I was thinking games. this, but I was actually really enjoying <laughs> the, 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 the conversation. So Maybe, maybe we should have a science <laughs> show well, called, yeah. called Resonance Cascade. <laughs> yes, maybe. Um, <laughs> any other hardware stuff then, <laughs> games-wise? Well, I, was, I, was, I, thought, I thought where you were leading with that, but I'll, I'll, I'll ask it myself. In terms of hardware, what would we like to see? What what do we do? We have some idealized things. Are the things that piss us off at the moment that we'd like to well, see improved? As I said last week, when we were talking about VR, my number one thing for gaming immersion is a holodeck. Right. And you might, it might you might scoff at it, you might laugh at it, but until that happens, I'm not interested in VR or haptic feedback or smell o vision or any of that other crap. So I, would you would you prefer a holodeck over total immersion, like plugged in? Yes. Yes. So you, pref- you would you not would you yes, not be a problem the fact that you run around getting knackered and sweaty in a game? You know, if I, you think I, about all, the amount of exercise you'd have to do to replicate a gaming experience. Fine with that. I fine suppose. With that. The problem with that is then the game itself is completely dictated by your own level of fitness. Yeah. Whereas if you're yeah. total immersion, you can assume an assassin or you know. Uh, Big booty commando or something. If you're just playing you, then you're just you. But the only, the only total, total, the only, as we established last week. Again, scientists may have a better answer for this, but as we established last week, it's total immersion would mean a, a better than life chip or being plugged into something and being comatose and your entire kind of being being taken. You know, your your new neural system being taken over. And what if you could do it while you were still conscious? While you were like, that wouldn't be still aware of though. what was happening. Well, when you go into an isolation tank, you're unconscious. Uh, but I, you're still I, in the same situation what? where your body's wasting away because you're not moving. Yeah, but I, I expect the idea being is that you'll be playing this game and think, oh, this is awesome. You're like, oh, shit, I'm hungry. Or, oh, dear, I need to go to the bathroom. Then you'd have to disconnect from that reality. Yeah. Go and do what you need to do, then come back. <laughs> There'll be people that got addicted to it and people that abuse it. That's going to be the same with any technology and with anything that comes out. People always abuse it to try and take it too far. I, I would prefer the total immersion. I mean, I, the thing is, I've played um, paintball. Now, paintball is as close as I'll get to. Yeah, I know you're sucking in, but it, everyone plays paintball. But it, it, <laughs> when I played paintball, it raised a very, a very kind of real limitation for me, which is that I, I, I could have enjoyed it more if I was fitter. Or if my body was more able to do things, and it really hammers home how unfit you are when you try and play paintball. Yeah. Even no, if you I'm, are quite fit. I'm with you there because I did it for my stag do, and my lord, I was knackered. Yeah, yeah. You, you can <laughs> last, you can last, you last five or ten minutes, and it's uncomfortable, and you, you you're in the mud, and you're hurting your knees, and you know your, your feet ache, and you, you, it just for, to be a hollow deck where you run around in a gaming scenario. Because most still- gaming scenarios would be intolerable. You know that, you're right, you're right. Okay. <coughs> I, I don't know what to say to that then, because you're totally right about the holodeck. It's not just the, the fitness thing, it's also think about how things are going to react to you. If something is, even if it's like a a hard drive hologram, you know, it's, it's a f- physical rendered graphic or something, I don't know how you'd what you'd term them as but it'd be something that you'd have to interact with and something mm. that you would have to get feedback from and something that you would have to give feedback to directly so it wouldn't just be being in the holodeck and the holodeck turning into a world you'd, there'd have to be some way of that giving you smells and and not just vision you know everything yeah so it would i think the only the only way to for me to be happy then would be to 
go for the total immersion thinking about it. Mm. But I don't like the idea of it because it scares me. It scares me that I'm already connected to my computer, you know, but not physically. And being physically connected to it, I think, is quite a scary thing, especially with the online persistence that we have these days and viruses and everything, you know, that they could develop things to infect the human being, you know. Yeah. Again, that's been, in fact, that was uh, one of the story that was investigated or part of the story that was investigated when I was playing um, Shadowrun Dragonfall. Um, well, it, yeah, it's in uh, the Matrix sequels, isn't it, where Agent Smith actually yeah, yeah, yeah. gets out the Matrix into some a real person with a beard. Yeah, I can't. I, I'll be honest. I put those out of my mind. The sequels. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. I think you and I both, and I think probably well, Steve. What's yours? Do you have one? What? Uh, you know, in terms of a. Uh, I've been arguing on like the side of total immersion, so I think I'll have to. No, no. You meant yeah. have you got another one that you would you would really want another <coughs> piece of hardware? Just from any you... sort of hardware. For gaming wise, I'd... yeah. Um. These things but total immersion is just that much of an attraction. It's the Isn't only it thing that could make a game better for me. It's Games weird are perfect all, as they all, are. All three of us want more immersion, don't we? Mm. It's you like know what? I don't I don't want it. I said that if I, I I'm I'm happy without it. I'm really am content with the <coughs> way games are now. I don't I don't mean I don't want the games to evolve, but in terms of the hardware and the way that I as a human being interact with my computer, I'm happy with it. I feel like I've got enough control, you know. The VR thing, I can get. I can. I think I can just give it or take. I'm sure I'll love it when I do try it, but I don't think. I don't think it's going to take off personally. I don't think it's going to get anywhere. What about but, like a step back from from total immersion, but just um, like the ability to be able to control whatever game you're playing with your mind without having to use your hands. That'd be cool. Again, that's, that's something that that is semi-possible today. Uh, you have an really experiment hard. where people can control a cursor on a screen with the brain hmm. while they're obviously wired up. Um, but I've, again, these things have got to happen in little steps. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So I mean, if, if that was possible, but would you then have to concentrate too much so that... I think that is a perfect application for... Uh, dis people with disabilities for training for that kind of thing. I think again, it's like VR. It's got a, a very, very good use. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying VR is useless, but I'm I think in terms of for games, I don't think it will add much to people like you and I. But to people who don't have arms, you know, who can't control know. the keyboard and mouse, I think that's brilliant. I, I, th I think that's brilliant. Even if you you are fully able, I think to be able to 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 you know if. You're not great with hand-eye coordination, for instance. If you don't have very good reactions, if you can just think it and aim, think it and, and move. Surely you'd you'd be like an aimbot, though. Some people would be better at. Oh it yeah, than every, but everyone would. Well, you. you I, I just think I'm I'm really interested in that, and I think if you combine that with VR, you'd have pretty much a, a total immersion sort of situation, wouldn't you? If you could control everything with your mind, and you had. Like full field visual and audio feedback, there's not much left in terms um, of the steps towards total immersion. How much though should you control with your mind? Because you know, at the end of the day, well, that's the thing. It's like every game has a different mechanic. You know, playing playing through Dishonored and controlling everything with your mind. It's like how how well, would I think that it, even it work? Be, well, it's quite simple if you break it down. If you think of it in terms of when you think you want to walk forward, you walk forward. When you think you want to move yeah. back, you move how back and so on. In order to be able to do it, though, you've actually got to learn how to do it. It's not a yeah. case of you get linked up and you're like, I know how to move forward, to move forward. You've actually got well, to find what thought process works and then remember that and then try and develop that. Yeah, and that's the big hurdle at the moment because the current system is basically to to go left you've got to think of an apple and to go right you've got to think of a, a chicken. No, you've got to think of completely. That, well, saying. you've got to think of very different things in order for the the software to be a track where your brain's thinking about a certain thing. Yeah. In order to interpret that as going left or going right. And what's well, it's uh, not normally like a memory thing. It's normally um, it's a nervous system thing that yeah, you've got to think of. So remember, it's like you know you might be like flaring your nostrils or. One thing we're we're, ta we're, we're taking for advantage, taking uh, for granted here, is that the game developers, the people who are creating each pixel in these games, 
which is basically how you create a game. Even when you're writing, you know, using another engine, you basically program every single bit of it. You program the textures different from the from the meshes, and the you know the meshes different from the colliders, and uh, that's just that's just creating the world itself. Then there's all the programming behind all of the functionality in the games. We're not thinking about how much how far games themselves need to come into reality before these control systems are actually going to be any use i you know if i if we put out quake 2 and got someone to run around in quake 2 they've got very limited ability it wouldn't be total immersion would it because you wouldn't be you'd be still limited by what you can do in the engine in the, by the game yeah. so you wouldn't believe that it was real so we'd still have that disconnection from reality surely there's got to be like a paradigm shift when something like that happens. It's like, mm. if this technology comes out, I mean, who said that a shooting game has to be the way that it is now? You know, where you play inside it's software. A level, yeah. And <laughs> I, th I think that when these new technologies do become mainstream, what we're going to see is a completely <coughs> new kind of. Well, I don't know if they're a gaming type evolve, shall we say? Yeah, a new genre. Yeah, and it, it of, of course it'll still be a shooting game, but it won't necessarily be the type of shooting game that we're familiar with today. Yeah, the same I as when 3D came out, it was a different type of shooting game than we were used to up to that yeah. point. It would it would have to be a very big shift, wouldn't it? Because it couldn't just take baby steps from the FPS no, no. genre. Because it, you're right, you, we're, we're kind of entrenched in a, a very specific way of playing those games. How long has it taken us to to evolve the the, the visual aspect of games to a cert, to the point where it's almost believable? And it's it's fairly recent, isn't it? That we've got to it a is. point now where we'll always have that. Um, <coughs> you know, we look a couple of years back. Oh, I can tell that CGI now. Because it's got much better, and you know we've got bump mapping, we've got specular lighting, we've got all the cool new features and hardware. Features. I think this development is going to go on for a long time because I can remember every major new hardware kind of a generation step, looking at the screenshots and saying, "Oh my god, that's amazing! How can that get better?" And it happens every time. Mm -hmm. D does anyone remember um, Porsche Challenge for the PlayStation the original? Yeah, yep. yeah. Do you remember how unbelievably realistic that looked? Yeah. I'm looking at screenshots of it now, and it still looks good today. Look, you look at Green Grand. Oh my God, Gran Gran Turismo Two. Yeah. It doesn't look as good as you think it did. It really doesn't. But this this Porsche Challenge looks excellent. And this is PS One. I doubt that. <laughs> it looks really good, actually. But it doesn't look realistic, though, does it? It looks. I don't quite even realistic. need to look at it. It's a PS One game. It's not going to look realistic by today's standards. <laughs> Go on, Steve, tell it's me the truth. If I put it on my screen and I move right back here and squint a bit, bear in mind it's only 480p. Punch myself it, in the brain a few it, times. <laughs> it kind of looks like it could be from a really bad cops show from like the 1990s. I'm, I'm not even going to look because you're talking out your arse, Lou. It looks aesthetically pleasing, yes, okay, I agree there, but it doesn't it look, does look realistic. It doesn't look realistic by any measure of the word. PS1 cannot look realistic by today's standards. I don't care what you say. Look at how good Metal Gear Solid looked, but there's still loads of problems with it. In terms that of... That was a stylistic... You almost went through an entire episode there without you mentioning Metal yeah, Gear Solid. I know, I've talked about it twice <laughs> before now. Bad Chris. There was two two whole mentions before this. Anyway. Two whole mentions? Yes. Um, but, no, I was saying, how long has it taken us to get to a, a point where we, we can possibly mistake even if it takes ages to render them still possibly mistake a computer character for a human stood side by side are we there yet i think i when think when far are. fantasy the spirits within came out a lot of people were saying that we were there but that was years ago now yeah but uh, you can tell that now though can't you again this yeah, is yeah that's that what i mean but every time this goes on you, you get familiar with it you start to learn how it looks it's only when it's new that it confuses you once it's well, it's the Uncanny Valley the thing, technology. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. How, if, if we've got to that point now, we haven't even started on working on... Um, well, no, we have started on all of these things, but we haven't really seen any kind of consumer release for anything to do with smell, anything to do with uh, control systems from the mind, <laughs> and uh, anything to do with kind of, 
you know immersing you in like we've got the v- vr which is coming but that's still visual really isn't it it's the only thing that it's adding really is 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 additional immersion additional you know mm. it's getting you into the world getting you involved and in the game even with vr it's still difficult to trick the brain fully into believing that the depth is actually there yeah i imagine I, I i haven't played it yet but i mean i've heard a lot of people who love it absolutely love it and i bet lou will be spunking about it for weeks after he gets one if not longer than that i'm gonna do the next few shows with it on my face <laughs> and i will be having a go when i come down and see you but i know well that'll be later this month yeah but i'm, I'm sure yeah. uh I'm sure I'll be like, yeah, I can see the potential there for some things, but not games. Yeah, you're going to play it really cool, aren't you? You're going to go, yeah, this is all right. Yeah. No, I'm not. No, 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 you know me, this mate. Shit. I'm not. And then you're going to go over and buy it. I and am buy not you. Secret. You know me, right? <laughs> credit where credit is due at the end of the day. That's how I, I roll. You are like that. You're the elitist. I'm. You're the bad winner and the bad loser and everything Everything about you is is but. terrible human being basically <laughs> i'm i'm a quite a level-headed grounded person and and you know i can be a bit awkward at times but i'm i'm not gonna just say oh it's shit or whatever if if it's awesome but i still i still don't see how that's going to get my gaming experience in in the long term yes but in the short term i don't i, I don't see the first release of vr being going anywhere really there's not enough investment we'll from see. developers. We'll see. I, I'm not saying one way or the other, really. I just want to try it. I'm, I'm really interested in playing uh, Half-Life 2. As a geek, yes. As a geek, I want to try it. As a geek, I want to own one and play with it and and create loads Put of little cool games. Yeah, create loads of little cool games with it and, you know, experiment. But I, in reality, which is unfortunately where my brain sits most of the time, I haven't got the time for that kind of thing, so I can't really invest in it, you know. But anyway. Right, so um, I think we're getting close to the end of the show, but is there any other things you guys want to talk about? I don't really have any subjects here. I can just talk about all of them. Something we haven't covered at all is audio. Audio hardware, um, advances in audio. I mean, we basically, we're all sat here with stereo headphones on. Which is where we were in, you know, 1960 or something. Or I've got 5.1 stereo... headphones on, thank you very much. Uh, do you ever use the 5.1 in it? No. Why are but... you nodding your head? Are you listening to music? No, you just said music, so I've automatically got something playing in my head now. I said audio. Well, you said audio and automatically started dancing. You, you assumed it was music, yeah. I, I just mean audio in general. We... Has the audio come along? I mean, I know there's been advances such as the 5.1 headphones and even the 5.1 system, the 7.1 and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Audio is always the kind of the, the poor third cousin to everything else, to the graphics and to the inputs and stuff. Yeah, because once you reach a certain level with audio like capabilities, i.e. you're not using a square wave chip and you can actually play live recordings at 44 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz, then you're kind of you're up there. There's, there's not an awful lot better you can do. If you want to go beyond that, you need to start putting speakers around, which case you need certain shaped rooms in order to resonate a certain way. And it gets very complicated. Yeah. Yes, the Xbox One and the PS4 are 5.1 capable. Yes, you can put a sound bar into them. I'm sure it would be a quality experience. But would you, if you were playing a game intensively, would you prefer to use headphones or speakers? Headphones. Uh, speakers. Mm. I never, ever use headphones unless I'm at a LAN party or I'm... Speaking of I you always guys. use headphones. I much prefer. I, well, I, I think I have trouble hearing certain things, so I um, like to be able what? to hear everything. We we know that, Lou. So yeah, I, but it's not just that. It's also I I like to be able to hear everything in a game. Mm. Um, I I rely very heavily on sounds behind me and sounds to the side of me. Um, it it depends on the game for me. If it's no. like an RTS where you don't need to need to have directional sound, then I'm okay with the speakers, but. If it's a first-person shooter, some for example, like Far Cry, where you could have a, a panther creeping up on you, you need to be able to hear where, like, what direction the noise is yeah. coming from. And yeah. I, that, I agree. Headphones. Um, I've got a particularly good audio setup in both of my gaming rooms, though. Uh, here, I've got my studio monitors, which are very expensive. Let me say, the the you know the the proper good Mackie speakers that I've got going on here. And they're, they're set up right there. I've got total control over volume and exactly how it should sound. And I've got uh, I've tweaked them and 
there's million there's loads of settings on the back of them for different different reasons and all of that is tweaked and, and working yeah. so i've got it and yeah he still forgets to turn his microphone on all the time <laughs> it's easy to do though when i can't hear what's coming through certain channels because i haven't got a full desk but anyway um but no you're right audio does get left behind a little bit um well, that's, but it gets left behind in everything in game designers itself it gets left yeah. behind when it comes yeah. to when it comes to someone asking a musician to do something musicians aren't um they're, they're not valued as much as other people that contribute to a project such as game dev such as doing an album session work that kind of thing you know it's not it it's obviously important in the industries that it relates to but it's not i don't know audio just seems to kind of get forgotten but if you don't have the right audio you notice immediately yeah. these days the, the reason i mention it is because I, I watched the keynote um again on oculus and um, they said that audio with VR would suddenly become very important indeed to the point where they were thinking about they, they were talking about, first of all they've got integrated audio with the um, the, the, the uh, Crescent Bay um, Oculus development kit and that integrated audio so it's, it's got a pair of uh, headphones built into it are way better than any of the gaming grade headphones and in fact the, the guy um, Palmer Lucky said that all gaming audio was shit basically uh, all the headsets you can get, even the top end, even the top end gaming headsets are rubbish. This is this is this is a top end headset. This is an AS four hundred, I think they are. Who's it, made? It, who made them? A forty. Um, what brand? Can't remember. It was four hundred quid what, anyway. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, four hundred pound for a pair of fucking headphones, and they're not very good. Uh, well, there you go. You just said it yourself. They're not very good. Astro. Um, Astro. Yeah. Astro so what they were, 40s they are. They were thinking of two things. One, they wanted to put some decent headphones in there because they knew the importance of that. And two, and this is this is quite interesting, I thought, they were thinking about doing fixed volume so they could open up the dynamic range. So they right. could have quiet sounds and loud sounds. Well, no, that's the, another that's another problem that you get a lot these days, again with all kinds of yeah, the compression on things. Most modern albums are compressed to hell. Everything sounds the same. Everything sounds the same volume. Whereas you look, you listen to an old analog record. You know, you put on something on your old Victrola, and you you still you you can hear it. You have to whack it up in order to actually hear some of the sounds on it because yeah. they're really really quiet on the actual there's actual a, recording. There's um there's an example of the the Beatles re-releases over the years from the original releases to the modern releases, and each time there's more compression and it's more and more compressed and there's less and less dynamic range. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see it, it is just in a mass It's this arms race to get loud noises basically. Louder but they is were better. talking about, they were talking about having no volume control and the, the developers being in control of the, the the loudness of the sounds because Bad you've idea. got headphones. Bad well, idea. That, 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 you know this is this is some very top and people talking about this stuff it is yeah, a very real consideration people don't buy virtual reality headsets yeah the, the, yeah these people these people may be top end intelligent people but they're not consumers consumers want they're not, control but i think consumers don't know yeah consumers don't know best so it's a reason well, consumers if, are the reason yeah, that's that's not the compression if, i'm sorry i'm sorry rule, but yeah. Go on, people stick. were out there buying the best product not the best advertised product or the nice looking product if the smart guys were able to figure out what people actually wanted, they'd be making billions. The, the problem is people are massively fickle, and everyone's got a different taste, and everyone's got a different opinion. And even if someone is wrong and they know they're wrong, some people will still argue mm. for yeah. the other camp just to be on like the other Lou. side. So, like Lou. No, that's nothing like me. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, not Such Lou, actually. Form, it, it, you're not like that, but I, I do know a few people like that who yeah, just argue for all the your fucking files. sake of it. No, the people who buy something really expensive and then have to defend it to the to the death. Yeah. Mac owners. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's not start <laughs> listing all the people we hate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 audio to me is because I come from a well, I say an audio background. I spent a long time running a recording studio, being in a band and producing records and stuff. Not anything serious, just you know, local bands. But I kind of got a real appreciation for music and for sound and for scoring and I really really do it really matters to me now so I'm trying to put effort into my game on the audio front but in terms of the hardware it's like yeah everyone's going to be different not everyone's going to have these lovely 
reference monitors that I've got, you know? Not everyone's going to have the, the 9.1 surround system I've got downstairs that I use for my consoles. Come. But, I, you know, you still have to... You still have to, even have to worry about people who are in mono, for God's sake. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just, uh, I just thought that that was an interesting one. And the fact that we hadn't even thought about it until the last minute shows how under-regarded audio is. Not just in gaming, but in hardware terms. I mean, in the fact that you can buy over-expensive Beats by Dre headphones that are absolute rubbish. They are dire. I've, I've Wasn't it actually uh, released on the news the other week that the Beats headphones actually only cost about eight dollars to make? They're, they're complete Probably. trash. Yeah, yeah. And I listened to some Beats HMV by Dr. Dre. What qualifies Dr. Dre as a headphone manufacturer? Because it's not. It's, it's celebrity tie-in, isn't it? I mean, you can buy loads of celebrity editions, like uh, I don't know, like Kylie Minogue by Dre or whatever. Yeah, yeah but what qualifies that? <laughs> Other celebrities <laughs> are available. <laughs> yeah, but you know, if, if if you were making like a cooking sauce, you know, like a pasta sauce, and it was endorsed by a famous chef, you think, yeah, okay, that guy knows how to cook. That's a sauce. His recommendation is valid. Then when you like get Grossman someone who releases one, yeah, when you get someone who who makes music but doesn't make audio hardware, endorsing audio hardware, it kind of makes you question it a little bit because what does he know about, you know, the, diff the, makes, the difference in fidelity between different spare speaker materials? It does Again. question it, but it doesn't, it doesn't make anyone else who bi buys anything with Kim Kardashian on it. No, because the, uh, I was, I was going to say something there, it might have offend our watchers and, our, and the general public. <laughs> uh, I, th that's the, that's, that is the general thing, though, isn't it? General consumers... And we're all consumers, general consumers in some way. All three of us will buy something that we could get better somewhere else because we're not aware of the better product, you know? I can't think of an example right now, but I, I used to buy um, <laughs> consumer audio hardware before I realised that professional stuff is, is only a little, well, actually quite a lot more expensive in some places, but it's better for what I do, for, for the things that I do, but instead of struggling yeah. with it. But anyway. I mean, as, as a general rule, and I'm, I, I know Lou's the same, and I think you're pretty much the same as well, Chris, any major hardware purchase that I make, I research the fuck out of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, and I want to know what I'm buying, I want to know what's available, what the comparative prices are, and what the benefits are to me for the different technologies. But that not but a lot of consumers. A do lot that. of people these days. I mean, Christ, there's there's people on Facebook asking for phone numbers for something. You're like, <laughs> you're actually on the internet at the moment. You know, you you just go at the top it way on Facebook and this write this takes us whole sort of circle shop. back to the beginning of the conversation about the Steam box. It's exactly the same thing. Consumers, <laughs> normal people, don't want the inconvenience of having to learn something in order to use something. That's why Guitar Hero is successful, because people think they're rock stars when they're playing a bit of plastic, because it's easy to play. I, I love Rockstar, by, sorry, I love Guitar Hero, by the way, so don't start hating on me if you see that. But it, it's, you know, if, if, people as, as a whole want convenience. The Steam Box is going to give them that. The but there's about 14 different versions available for them, <laughs> and they're all massively expensive. <laughs> we, we just we went full this. circle. Yeah. What I will say though yeah, is I'm not that gonna argue again. you've actually you've just described the essence of what people want and what it, how it relates to gaming. Because what people want with gaming is to have an experience that's outside of what they normally have, hmm. make themselves feel better than they normally are. It's quite interesting that really. Um, you know, when people play a plastic guitar and think they're a rock star, the same people will be playing with a control pad, thinking the Michael Schumacher or thinking the the a master assassin or whatever else. It, it's it's play, isn't it? It's you know play. What, it's make believe. I think that might be a good subject for uh, for a game immersion uh, for a for a show immersion, and what makes you feel what what do you feel when you play computer games? Let's do it for the next one. Yeah, maybe yeah. Yeah, put it in the list. We'll uh, we'll have a talk afterwards. Um, but yeah, anyway. So I think um, could, I mean, could we do another hardware one possibly? Because there's still loads to talk about, I imagine. But I think we should give it a break for a bit. We'll give it a break. But yeah, we could yeah. Do, we could come back to this. I think. Mm -hmm. But yes, um, it is half nine, and we uh, think we we pretty much hit two two hours on the the head this time. Um, thanks for everyone for watching, and uh, we'll. We'll see you next week. Next week, hopefully, we'll have a, another subject. We may just talk about what we just said, but we may talk about something else. We'll announce it on Twitter. Um, 
Check us out on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, forward slash Resonance Arcade for all of those. And um, yeah, watch this space. Friday we're going to be playing... What? Shall I stream the XCOM thing or shall I... Uh... Uh, well, I was going to say I'm not actually here this Friday. Okay. Or right, next so it's Friday. either me and Lou playing Gears of War or uh, Gears of War 2 again or we'll, uh, we'll stream last or the weekend's XCOM stuff. It's only 40 minutes that we recorded, but... It's better than nothing at all, isn't it? <clears throat> I'm willing to catch up on a bit of Gears of War. But we can also play some Gears of War, so... Yeah. yeah. Uh, and on Monday, we're going to be starting Metal Gear Solid 2. We have actually pre-recorded it. However... <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, what's coming, folks. So of, don't even have yeah. to say it, Chris. Yeah, all right. <laughs> However, I fucked up yet again. Um... <laughs> Yeah, the, oh, it's it's okay. I've actually uploaded it to YouTube. It's not terrible. It's not live yet. It's still private, but uh, it's not terrible. But I know we could do a better job of it. And I think next Monday, if you guys are both here, and Sam is here, I'll be here. I think uh, it's probably better we, we're all there anyway because it's it's a totally different, you know, totally new game. We didn't get very far last time, so we'll probably reset the deaths and everything and just go for it from uh, from where we were. Because uh, you know, I actually played it again just briefly when I was just testing it earlier, and I got into the actual tanker within about ten seconds instead of fifteen minutes, like it took me before. Because <laughs> I was trying to get used to the controls and everything. Yeah, sorry, sorry. But anyway, yes. So thanks everyone for watching. Uh, bye from me. Bye from Steve. And bye from Lou. Bye bye. We'll catch you later.